If you've always wanted to support the show with your hard-earned cash, now's the time to pause, go to Patreon, and search out F and Rad. Join one of our tiers. You'll get ad-free episodes every week, one day early, plus more cool stuff. The F and Rad Snowboard Podcast is presented by Skyview Campers, Never Summer's innovative take on the tiny home. Designed and built in beautiful Colorado, check out skyviewcampers.com. Wired Snowboards builds quality snowboards by hand, 10 minutes away from my house. Visit wiredsnowboards.com and order one today. Fixed bindings are easy to adjust, long lasting, high performance bindings built to have less impact on the environment. Check out fixbindingco.com. New Greens, 100% organic, vibrant green juice. Buy yourself some at newgreens.com and use code F and RAD at checkout for 20% off. And for a chance to try New Greens for free, listen to the end of the show. Rip Curl Outerwear, strength, durability, and performance. Designed to search further in the snow, head to ripcurl.com and check out the anti-series jacket. I can't wait to rock this thing. The Boardroom Snowboard Shop, best selection, best prices, Vancouver's premier snowboard shop. Go to boardroomshop.com and use code FNRAD10 to save 10% off your next purchase. Support also comes from Mount Seymour, Grouse Mountain, Cypress Mountain, the Pro Standard GoPro Accessories, and our friends at 1910. You can use code FNRAD at checkout for 20% off at 1910.com. The Havens is a center for transformational learning located on beautiful Gabriola Island. Plan a visit at haven.ca and use code FNRAD at checkout to save 10% of their Come Alive program. Rube Goldberg is a professional snowboarder from Whistler in the 90s and 2000s. The year I got into the Baker Bank slalom, he had qualified first in the Pro Men's Masters category with one of the fastest times at Baker that year. Rube is a snowboarder's snowboarder, talented and humble, and right now he's taking a bit of a break due to a broken wrist that was definitely hurting him throughout this interview. Photographer. Ah. <laughs> oh no, oh, you're not. Man, I'm in bad shape. Just right. from this stupid uh, thing. All right, let's start with Slacking. this stupid thing. Right. So you were working. This isn't a snowboard related injury. No. How long has it been since you broke a bone on a snowboard? So at the, uh, I really thought I had never broken a bone, but my friend reminded me I did do two wrists once, like just the radius. Okay. Which, what's that? The inside the radius one? Is that, that button, the I think, ulna, right there. Yeah, or the, yeah. the, or the, the ulna runs up, connects with the radius, pretty sure, right there. Yeah, right That's here. what I broke, both of those. I don't remember like this kind of pain, I guess. We're old. I mean, you're young, but I'm pretty fucking, fucking 47. Old. It's old. You're old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Broken bones suck now, huh? I mean, I, I feel okay. I it could be worse. But that was up in your neck. You were just like, Ugh. yeah. But who knows what that? But something <laughs> probably from not like working this side for a week. It's only been a week. I oh, do that. dude, that's nasty. But uh, have they? Did they offer you the painkiller stuff? Or no, I turned them down. Yeah, was, they offered. I wasn't though. really like in any pain. Only when I move, which is fucking you move, <laughs> but like. I wasn't dying. I looked next door. There was a girl and her, her wrist was like totally displaced. Like, mm-hmm. And I was, That's gross. I was, I, I didn't think it was going to be broken. I thought the doctor was going to come back and say, you're, you're fine. You're, you're a little <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Cause I was starting to feel good. I'm like, yes, yes. And then he came out and I remember like, being like, tell me the good news. And he said, it, this is fractured and uh, four to six weeks. Yeah. It's been yeah. a week. And can't work. And the cast that you have on it, it's got boas on it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty sick. Like, really, I could take it off, just like boa style. And you can go in the shower with it. I guess take that's it. the no, no. The you bonus. just you take it off. You go in the shower. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You can go with your broken bone. Yeah. Don't take it off. You know. <laughs> but really, yeah, it's really cool. I mean, that's the best ad for because I had half right cast. There. Yeah, for a second there, I didn't know. I don't know. Like, I, it's weird. But now you start to lose mobility. Like, oh, that's the worst. So that's the main thing I'm working on, I guess. It's just, just keeping mobility keep while you're healing. Moving, yeah. Because yeah. I've always been the worst. I've had two knee surgeries. 
I do not remember f- doing anything anybody told me. <laughs> like my, I, I, I don't remember rehabbing my knee surgery, both. And then my left one is, was the second one, and it, uh, it's the one that bothers, bothers me the most. I remember, I remember, because I broke my femur. Oh, wow. That's and a- I, I actually, like, got to the point where I was, like, kind of boycotting physical therapy. Like, I was like, they're pushing me too hard. This is stupid. And how'd it go? <laughs> I had a limp 18 months yeah, later. Yeah, like, I imagine if you're doing a serious bone like that. Like, I, 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 I mean, when you're younger, you, you're invincible. And then at my age now, I still feel invincible. But I know, I'm like, okay, I, I need to do these. Or I can't do my job properly, I guess. Well, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. It's actually like great. (laughs) Everybody's kind of like, oh no, no. Cause I did that post on Instagram and just whatever was joking around and, and you get the comments back and I was like, oh no, that sucks. Oh shit. Cause it's supposed to snow a bunch. And like, if I, it was like, uh, like I feel good not being able to snowboard, not being able to do anything. Finally, you know, like, yeah, guess what? I can't do anything i can do small chores but like i can't i it's really a time for me to just chill out which rarely happens so i think i'd have a I'm panic like, attack what's that if chilling I out chilling out because then i would just scroll on my phone and feel it's, like a yeah, shit for sure that time is up but really like waking up and trying to like uh, you're like relearning things with my left hand, like how to put your socks on, how to put, cool. Like it's not crazy or anything, but no, it's that's like, cool. There shit, is though, a way to do it right. You know, and like you're trying to figure out to make it easier, like taking your fucking sweater off without screaming or yeah, it's definitely, it's like cutting tomatoes. <laughs> like it's, it's cool, man. I'm having a good time. Kind of pretty. I'm pretty much having a great time. Not yeah. having to do anything. Yeah, you know, Craig Kelly was working on that back, like, that was one of his things, was that he, he, he tried to do everything, he realized that the asymmetry of standing sideways was conditioning his body a certain way, so he tried switching everything around, tried doing everything backwards, just to, just it's to It's hard to follow through out. with that, I'm sure. Like, oh, yeah. Like, keep going, keep doing, like, the other day, <clears throat> I was riding with my girlfriend, and I was thinking that... I would. I thought she was gonna be a horrible skier, mm-hmm. so I was gonna ride switch. Yeah. And just thinking of the commitment of staying in that stance, like I was gonna change the stance, and yeah. it was, freaked me out a bit. So I didn't. And she's a good skier, so it worked out. But anyway. So you were skiing with your bus? You were snowboarding with your bus? No, around. this was before. Right before. Right before. No, I haven't gone yet. I thought I could go tomorrow, maybe, but yeah. uh, I think it's too soon. The consequences are shitty, hey? Like it's just. I like, mean. Pff- when you're like thinking just, about it, the injury, you're, you're like more likely to fucking rack it on something. It's not worth it. I, I guess it's not worth it. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll be back. I had a good year. I have a bunch of days and uh, I had a good year, man. Fuck. It was really good the day before. Like I went out with E-Man and we fucking had a good time. And, uh, and then it was over. <laughs> How long have you been in Whistler for? You've been there for quite some time now. 1994. Five. Damn, that's early. Yeah, kind I think that's th- close. I think that's a year after JF or the same year. Yeah, no, I think yeah. they were there too. My best friend, two of my best friends, Mike and Dave, moved out the year I graduated. They were a year ahead of me, so I graduated in 94. They went out and they met JF and everybody. So they were all homies. I came out the following year. Yeah, Maybe JF was there before, but. Could have been. Actually, you know what? You're right. It was the first year like I was at Boardroom 93, 93, 94. JF pulled up in a, some little car, then went and lived in Whistler in this car and got sponsored by Planet X. I remember him that saying that. Planet X. It was uh, this guy, Jeff. It was a cool little outerwear company around the corner from the boardroom on Burrard and Fourth. It was on Pine, actually. But I remember he, he was talking about this contract where... If he gets a cover, he gets ten thousand dollars, and then he got a cover. No way! Yeah. Did he get paid? Yes, he did. He got paid. Wow! And Jeff was like, "Oh shit! Like, I hope this 
you know, makes those sales to cover this, but the contract was good. <laughs> That's awesome. That was Rev Days, JF. Yeah. Like, what a team that was. Holy shit. JP Walker? Jeremy Jones was also on was there. Bjorn? Bjorn was on there. Yeah, see, those were the days. That was like Whistler early days. Yes. For me, didn't know anybody, but watched like the Kokanee Big Air. Mm. My buddy Demo was in there, and he was killing it. And I was in that. It. No shit. Was it the year that Risto Scott won it? I think Risto did win it. Yeah, yeah right. I was there. Jordan I, was like close by or something, but yeah, I think Risto did win that year. And he was spinning like yeah. new. It was a new yeah, way yeah, yeah, of yeah. spinning. I thought he was just hucking, but he was actually. No, they were good. That he, Kelowna he, crew was good. Yeah, he knew how to. He knew how to put that down. I remember going up to Risto and saying. You should talk to the LibTech distributors for a sponsor. You should be sponsored. <laughs> well, so he wasn't. What was he riding? I think he was riding a LibTech. I think he was riding like a board he bought. I believe that. I, I, you know, I, my memory's not always a hundred percent on. It's but fifty I, years ago. I do remember saying to him, like, "You, if you're not sponsored, you should be." And there was like that. There was still. <laughs> <laughs> there was still a ladies' tea and a men's tea, and I never went off the men's tea, and I was competing in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get in? Did you just have to pay for that? I can't remember. Why didn't I do that thing, man? What's up? It was uh, it was a sanctioned event, and it cost about a hundred bucks after all was said and done. I don't like, think we were good enough yet. You had to be you had to be a part of the fist. It was a fist actual event, so like you got fist points from that <laughs> shit. I remember getting a fist letter in the mail that said i was like 117th on the fist chart yeah, yeah i remember seeing those things and palmer was on the he was number nice. one yeah it was crazy but that was those kokanee big airs like think of how sloppy that build was too like it was just like a couple lumps of snow and where was that like i still don't know where it was i can't even think of it either it was in a weird spot that's for sure i ended up getting I ended up getting sledded out. The only time I've ever been sledded out. Because you hurt yourself. I wasn't. It wasn't even a hurt. It was a. I got so dehydrated because we'd been drinking the whole night before, and then it was sunny, and I didn't drink any water, didn't have anything, totally dehydrated, and my my uh, ass muscle seized up. It's a big muscle, and it pulled my hip out of joint. And I was fucked. I couldn't move. <laughs> not from a bail, a, not from anything. A weird one. Just from being probably nervous, actually, if I'm honest. That was really nerve wracking. It's like a stress pull. Yeah, because they put us, uh, we were in the pro category. And if I can't even go off the big jump and I'm in the pro category, come on. I'm not a pro. Jim Barnum was in our little crew and he hit the big jump. I remember he spun out. Did you ever li live in Whistler? Never. No. I was told when I moved out here that Whistler was an hour away from Vancouver. So it was like, oh, we'll go up there all the time. I had a summer pass when I first moved out here, and we'd drive up that road. It's, you know, before the highway was done. It was a solid two hours yeah, yeah, from the yeah. city, really. But, you know, you could do it at night in about an hour and a half or something. But, yeah, I didn't. I've, I've, and then it, it's so much more comfortable for a guy like me at like Grouse or Seymour or Cypress. It's small. It's not big. Yeah. Whistler's fucking gnarly, dude. When you first show up there and everyone's riding super fast, it feels like consequence, you know? <laughs> Just slow down. Don't fall next. <laughs> ah. or, or Kevin Young or Vitelli. Like, that's who we're riding with up there. And and they had hit runs where it was like the hits were just fucking massive. Oh, rollers. the hit runs so good right now. It's like the best year ever. Yeah. The snow's been so good. The hit run is so good. It's all over now. That's what snowboarding's all about, right? Like I think it's a good it's a good place, like to really like learn how to use your edges and like pump speed and Ollie instead of like running cheese wedges you know yeah, all the time yeah or whatever park jumps or people are still just like scrubbing or whatever you can't like go mock 10 off certain jumps on a hit run you, what, you like you need to slow down you need to ollie i don't know but oh it it, it definitely grows amazing amazing snowboarders yeah. i would take these uh there was a japanese crew that would come 
every year to do this camp, DMK snowboard camp. I don't who, know if it's still who going. Who puts that on? This guy, Fusaki Ida. I met him at Superpipe camp in like 1998 and he like took me under his wing and like made me kind of cool in Japan pretty much. So cool. So he would bring this crew of old men and like an older crowd, not all men, but some women, but like an older crowd. And, uh, we'd go riding and they want to go to the park or it's just, everybody's kind of drawn to the park, but we would go do hit runs and, uh, and they'd have a fucking blast, man. Hit runs are the best. I think I rode with Devin one time at Whistler, and the, and we were still riding the same hit run as when it was Kevin Young era. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, like there's only like a red line. There's yeah. an XL. There's a crystal. There's pretty much only three. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's it was a crystal. peak peak lap too, dude. I think they should do. Did you watch the Natural Selection? I did. Yeah. yeah. I think they should do a. Uh, a hit run. Oh, that would be a so A natural good. selection hit run. Well, guess every fucking so hill has action. the hit run. And, and like, like Brighton, yeah, Seymour. Yeah, exactly. Whistler. You can not that it was like everywhere. bad or anything, but yeah. like. No, no, it's to, not bad. Like the cameras, whatever fell out there or whatever happened there. Oh, that was wild. That was frustrating and for me watching it. Totally. I know. I just had to keep fucking yeah. fast forward. I didn't even yeah. know what was happening, but. Um, yeah. Imagine having a hit run, like the action would be nonstop. So I've, I've proposed just on mic, like it would also be cool to do, first of all, I don't want to insult anybody and get canceled. Like if w the women's event was at a venue that was just like a little more like conducive to like trying harder tricks, you know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't have to be fucking Travis Rice, super steep for everyone but then it wouldn't just be for women you could also add a legends category where you get fucking terry versus todd and you get fucking nico versus well nico could still go pro and so could terry and probably todd mm, I don't, sorry todd but it's pretty more if there was a mini golf natural selection mini yeah, that would that's be. Why it's got to be a hit run because it's so. It, yeah, a hit run would be so sick. Like think, think of so. the things you see go down on a hit it's run. Been long ago. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, that that's what you do is you do a Arthur Longo side hit run selection or From something. All the resorts, every resort, and when he shows up, the local pros come out of the woodwork, ride with him for a day, and then they run a contest on that. They build the hits proper. Ben Belock is like overseer. <laughs> Of building the side hits. That would be sick as fuck. Probably. Because there's nowhere appealing, in the world. Very appealing, I bet, too, because everybody's hitting those runs. There's nowhere in the world I've ever been that if you have a local guide that they don't take you to the hit run. Right? Like, yeah. no matter where you are. Oh, this is the hit run. That would be so good. We'll have to call it. <laughs> Like Ruth Chris Steakhouse, it's Rube, and then who? It, look, yeah, the Rube Arthur Longo <laughs> side hit run. Yeah, I'll be. Uh, what's the other good hit run resort? Have you been to Sun Peaks hit run? I don't. Uh, not the hit run. We went to the park because the park was fucking hit runs fire. amazing. Sun Peaks. Yeah, Sun Peaks is like a mini Whistler. I was really blown away by. It. Um, you know when you go to Sun Peaks and you're like. Oh fuck! There's big resorts where there's not crazy lineups. Yeah. Like, why do we go anywhere else? Yeah. Why wouldn't we just be here yeah. the whole time? Like, I should move. The high, there. There's no real good high alpine there, but right. But uh, so we do an Alaska definitely trip. side hit action everywhere, and it's big. Like the runs, they're long. The runs are long. Yeah. So uh, so you moved out here from Montreal, is that right? Yep. Yeah, you were telling me your dad was like an OG, like, restaurateur. My dad was old school. I mean, uh, 1920 he was born, 1919 maybe. In? Mon in Montreal. His so, parents came over from uh, Romania. Yeah. The Russian Jews came over on a boat. That's what he said. Uh, we did an interview with my dad before he passed, and he's like, on a boat, they came over on a boat. Anyways. <laughs> It's my mom. Get, take it. it take it. Yeah, put it on. I can hear it. Liv. What are you doing, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you so, you... I'm sitting on. You're on. You're on. You're on camera right now, so I can't talk. But okay. Well, well, well. I just, I just wanted to let you know that I tried a half 
a joint. I just took a few, I took a few puffs off, off of it, and uh, it, it didn't do much for me, so th that's why I came upstairs. All right, well, uh, go to bed then, I guess. What are you yeah, going to Wait a minute. Wait, wait. What are you, so what time are you coming home tomorrow? Probably like 4 o'clock. Yeah, Don't take it easy. <laughs> what time? What time is my appointment? Four o'clock. Four thirty. Why did you make it? So All right, Ma, I gotta go. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh my God! This is so ridiculous. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Oh, oh my god <laughs> Oh my god that was so good What a synchronicity See what I mean? You're talking about your dad your mom calls that was incredible Is she does she smoke weed is this a new thing that she's Well she's been having panic out? attacks well, weed's going to fucking make him worse. <laughs> She's going to be calling back in a minute. She's going to be like, did I just talk to you? And no, I say that out loud? Yeah. yeah no, She's yeah. definitely been having the attacks, and yeah. the weed, like, straightened her out. Okay, yeah. It's like Ritalin or whatever. Just, like, calmed her down. A regular and, person uh, would get paranoid on weed, but a paranoid person... She's blasting pills just, yeah. or something. And That's I'm like, no good. I'm like, just, you remember the weed hits quick. Like, right smoke away. a joint yeah. every time you do it. It's amazing. You always say it. I don't know why you keep fighting it. Yeah. Smoke the weed. Yeah. It's legal. It's 100% yeah. legal. It's good. Oh, so how long has she been out in Whistler? Uh, she has, she's been out since... Here's a funny one. So my dad passed 2016. Mm -hmm. My mom took care of my dad. 96. You know, not easy. Freaking out. Started. That's where her panic attacks started. Because mm. she was like, no one... No one would listen to her say like, I, I can't do this anymore. I need help. And oh, everybody, wow. all the kids are just like, fuck, whatever. So your husband, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, picked him. So she started yeah. to have these weird attacks. Oh, no. and we couldn't figure out what it was. Oh man. Couldn't figure out what was going on. Test after test, after test, after test. And then all of a sudden, uh, I don't know how I'm going so deep into this, but like I made her smoke some weed. That's rad. And then, so she was having these attacks every three days. Mm -hmm. She would have an attack. The next day, like, kind of recover. And then the third day, she'd be okay. And then, boom, it would happen again. It's like clockwork. And then we got stoned one night, sat, up, sat down for dinner. And she looked at her whatever. And she's like, oh, my God, it's Monday. It's time for my attack. And I was like, what? it's Monday. Like, now you, you're, that doesn't make any sense. Like now you, you're giving it a day. So clearly, like there's nothing, there's nothing wrong. It's all upstairs. This is happening in, inside. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we figured out that it was to do with her living situation and take care of my dad, whatever. He went to a home. He passed. And she said the day, I remember her saying this, Please just give me five more years because she's been taking care of him. She wants some time to herself. Let me have five years. She's not old at all, but it's, uh, I don't even know. That's, uh, she's probably like 75 then. And uh, five years to the day my mom has a stroke. Oh my God. To the fucking day. Oh, fuck. She put it out there. She got her five years and five years to the day in 2016 or, uh, 2021, I guess now. Yeah. 2016, 2021. Yeah. She has a stroke and she is mangled. Oh, no. Not, yeah, she was paralyzed left side for two weeks or so, maybe a month by the time I got to pull her out of the hospital. And then we put her at home and she was just kind of, you know, she can't smoke butts anymore. She's miserable. There's a dark cloud, she says, following her wherever that's she a, goes that's a really tough one man and like she's got nothing anymore she's just like staring at her fucking ipad and then we facetime all the time yeah and you just see that and i'm like i just finished building my house in pemberton i have the space and i was like fuck it i'm coming to get you if you hate she didn't want to come if you hate it 
we'll fly you back, but like, come check it out. Yeah. I live right in town. I'm two blocks from the store. Like, so she moved out and pff, she's not leaving, man. She loves it. <laughs> she loves it. Of course she does. Yeah. It's beautiful. You live, yeah. so you live right in town. I live right down the street from the snowmill shop. Yeah. Not, not in, in Pemberton. In Pemberton. In Pemberton. Yeah. There's a Bush's shop there. Al Bush. And then there's, I'm next, right next to Napa. It's like not, it's like two blocks from the grocery store. Oh, sick. It's perfect. Pemberton hasn't changed that much at in the last 20 years. There's pe- There's a lot more people. More but people like, for sure. That downtown thing was really always like go, that. There's nowhere to really go, man. It's yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah. We need to find, like the Legion I've found is finally, after maybe two or two years that I've been living there, like the Legion's pretty wicked. But Yeah. I always go to um, mile one. That yeah. place is epic. Yeah. But I mean, it's not a place to go hang out. No, no, exactly. There's nowhere to hang out. Yeah. It's like there's like nowhere to go, to go for a good. I mean, you know. fuck, what am I talking about? There's two spots, but music's, you know, not my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love that your mom just called. That is know, so, so fucking sweet. This is like every day, a couple, three times a day. We talk, we talk, especially yeah. when I'm in the city a couple of days. But yeah, my mom over the last year, she's been in a, in a care facility for a year now. Oh yeah, I and nice. but like my dad was doing the thing your mom was doing for like five years without telling anyone. We didn't even know he was doing that. Yeah, like my sister would go over and visit and be like, "Mom, why aren't you getting up and walking around?" She's like, "Oh, I just was right before you were here." And then my dad would be like, "Yeah, she was running all over the place or whatever." He was like covering for her, you know. <laughs> Turns out for five years she wasn't getting out of her chair. And my dad was like taking care of everything, dude. It was gnarly to find out. And then eventually she wiped out a bunch of times. And then we had to put her into a, I mean, it's not like we had to put her in a facility. She was in a hospital and they were like, she's not good to go home. Yeah. And so she hated that. Oh man, it's tough. And then I became daily talking to her. (coughs) I would just call her on the way to work every day and just, and she was chipper. She was good. She's like, I'm going to walk 90 steps today. I'm going to walk hundred steps today. And then I would talk to her and say, oh, that's, that's great. Hey, how how'd the steps go yesterday? She's like, hey, you know what? The nurse was kind of getting on my nerves, so I didn't, fuck that guy, you know, or whatever. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, well, there's always tomorrow. She's like, tomorrow I'm going to walk 200 steps, you know. I'll be home by my birthday. And then her birthday would come, and they'd be like, y- you can't walk to the car. Then you can't go home. So now it's, it's she's in an equilibrium now where she can she goes home on weekends, which is not the norm for the hospital. Like she still has like some part of her old life that's happening. Mm-hmm. And she's bummed and good. When she's bummed, I'm like, that's good that you're bummed because you're in a shit situation. You know, I've known you your, my whole life and the whole time you've been in a pretty good situation and this is kind of the worst you've been in. And she's sort of making the best of it, you know? That's good. My dad, it took him down. He fucking it took him down. It. No. As soon as we put him in, he was like, what are, what are you guys doing? It's man? not like, him. It's the other people. Like, it's hard to look around and see people that are just tough. fucking catatonic. It's like in there. And then you see his brain start to slip. He's like, mm. who are you? And you're like, holy fuck. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, he, he didn't like it. Yeah, he was take old, him out so, and he was like, yeah. fuck, man. I like, I hate this. Me and my brother oh. would sit there on the sidewalk and he'd yeah. just be like, this is, you could just, he was miserable. And then he just... He, they, someone tipped him off that if he stopped eating, he could get out of here sooner. Wow, really? Yeah. That's pretty fucking gnarly. It's pretty cool. <coughs> it's pretty, yeah, I mean, it's... So he pretty much, I was in Vegas. Yeah. And uh, I got the call, and he had decided to stop eating. Yeah. And Like he called you and told you, like... Well, hey, no, the doctor did. The doctor's like, like he's, he's refusing decided, food. He's refusing food, and he's got 48 hours or something like that. Yeah. So I flew home. The whole family flew in. Brothers, we have six. There's six of us total. And uh, kind of said our goodbyes. And then we took turns uh, taking watch over throughout the night. And he fucking died on my watch. Whoa, man. It was wicked. That's heavy. I wish I was... I remember watching... We were, I had CNN on because he always watched CNN. And I'm fucking like so bummed that maybe I should have had some Frank Sinatra on or something, but yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, like yeah. chat, I was chatting with my friend and, uh, then all of a sudden he like shot up in his, in his bed, like full zombie style, like 
pretty much that sound exactly. And it was, I had the lights out and I could see something coming out of his mouth, which I thought was blood. And then I turned the light on. It was like brown bile. It was oh, kind of wow. weird. And I was like, holy shit. And I hit the, I was hitting the button. Yeah. I ran down the hallway, told the nurse what was up, came back and like, put grabbed him from like uh lifted him up i guess or he was still sitting or whatever i was holding him and uh i was like it's time to go dad like or they're gonna come fuck who knows what like it's it's time to go and i watched his eyes like turn gray and his i heard his last it sounded like a this i've heard this noise twice now the i heard it from my dog and from my dad but he my dad was the first but like the last breath of air, it was so bizarre. And then I stood at the end of the bed and I was like, holy fuck, like, what the hell, man? It was so wicked. And then I sat outside. I was like, wow, man, what a trip. And then he was just laying in the, and we all came back at like three in the morning or whatever it was. And the whole family was just sitting there with my dad, just like in the bed. It was so fucked up. Came we, up in the morning, like, what are we doing? He's still there. We had no plan. Like, it was pretty funny. We are devoid of ceremony now in our communities, right? Like, I don't, uh, yeah, well, what would I do if my, if, if I'm sitting there, my mom died? I, we, with no plan. None. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Cause uh, we're like, we're Jewish. Well, but we we didn't okay. really follow the religion right. much. My dad was right. like the worst Jew, but the rest of the family was there. somewhat. Yeah, so you're not supposed to be cremated, you know. And that was my dad's wishes. So he asked to be cremated. Gotta so you got to do what you did, what he's asked for. But it was like that was a big little. Wow, man, that's heavy shit. I didn't think we'd be talking about it was this. So fucking all. cool, man. Death but, is thank you that for changed like shit. everything. Yeah. Like yes, yes. In my mind, like death is so wicked, man. It's so cool. Chris Nichols' dad just passed away. Mm -hmm. He pulled his own plug pretty much as well. Wow. He was in a lot of pain and having a rough go. And I was like, man, you get to like talk to your dad before he goes and you can say it. it's so beautiful, like that you have that opportunity. Like, and he's going out on his own, man. Like, it's pretty sick. That is sick. I agree. But uh, that's, yeah. Definitely opened my eyes a lot thinking about death and just try to die happy somehow. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> On your own terms too. Like that's, terms. that's like, crazy. I'm out of here. My dad was a fucking gangster. Like he did everything, whatever he wanted, he did it. Fuck you. I don't care. It's my way or the highway kind of style. And, uh, he finished that way. Was he running like a prohibition era? Like, yeah, he was. Easy thing. Kind of, yeah. 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 He, well, from what I've heard, right. Like he was 16 years old. He owned his first little blind pig pub where he was selling booze. And then I'm like, I could be wrong, but I listened to my mother and who knows what the fuck she's talking about. But, uh, there was a hotel, there was a restaurant, the place for steak. It was like the biggest supper club in Montreal at the time. Oof. And, uh, and I guess he was pulling in booze from somewhere else and he got shut down. Yeah, yeah. And then he was opened up a few more restaurants. One of them burned down, kind of sketchy sounding for sure. <laughs> there was another one named after me, Rube's Restaurant. It's still there. My what? uncle owns it. I've, I've heard or of it. Or my cousin now. But I've heard of this restaurant. No, it's there. In it's, Montreal. It's No, well, Rube's is on the outside. It's like uh, 30. We've got, you got Montreal, you got the airport, Dorval. Yeah. 25 minutes west is my hometown, Hudson, Quebec. Okay, okay. And there's a, a it's like St. Lazar, Monrigo, but Rubes is up there still, still there, steakhouse. Or that's, what is that? Anyways. That's so sick. Yeah. That's super duper sick. That's what, and then he had another one, Sam Shanty. It was Chinese, and that was like the end. Oh, no, there's one, the Vie Maison, that burned down. Like, supposedly, there was some shit going on, and <laughs> someone burned that place down. But, um, you just, uh, yeah. Anyway. If he's bootlegging liquor, he's he's got connections to somebody cool. Yeah, definitely. Some group of cool ass definitely. dudes. Yeah. Yeah, he was gangster. I mean, Montreal was fucking Hell's Angels for uh, you know the seventies yeah. and shit. Like, 
It's a real deal. Yeah, there's some gangster there somewhere for sure. So your mom's 20 years younger than he was, 20, 21 years younger. Were they married a long time? Second wife? My dad was married. Tw- I think this was his third wife. Third wife. First one passed, second one. He had three daughters and a son, adopted son. Mm-hmm. And then he met my mom after that one somehow. I don't know what that story is. Well, I do. I don't. Yeah, you don't. I don't to really you. know it, but yeah, like I've yeah. heard so many different <laughs> versions of who knows what's the real deal. But uh, and my mom has uh, another son from a previous marriage. So aren't those stories though? Like, so I just with my talking with my mom every day. One of the things I learned about her was that they had help when I was a kid, when they were kids, like they lived in the beaches in Toronto and they had a maid suite. They had a house out back for the maid. Like they had like a cook, they had like a laundry lady. They had like a, someone who took care of the kids. I was like, how the fuck did I not know this? That you had (laughs) like, that's not what I picture when you were growing up. I thought it was, you were raised by your grandparents. That's what you always said. But the grandparents were kind of rich, I guess, and they had help. That's so fucked up to me. <laughs> and then it turns out that my grandfather is the son of the maid. So, what? Your grandfather is the son of the maid? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Let me make sure that I got this right. Not the maid. So the, it has to be, yeah, my grandmother. Yeah. My grandmother was hooked up with the son of the maid. So the okay. maid lives there, takes care of the kids, <laughs> and oh. her son is married to one of the kids she's taking care of. That's not normal, I don't think. Or I guess it is, or I don't know. It's something that was so wild to find <coughs> out that I was like, I called my cousins. I was like, did you guys know this? And they were like, well, technically, yeah, I guess. I'm like, don't you guys think that's kind of fucking weird? <laughs> <laughs> because what makes it weird is that my grandmother was in a mental institution from in her 20s. So, like, the owners of, you know, the owners of the house have a maid. They have a daughter who's maybe not quite right. And then the son of the maid has kids. With the, oh, yeah, it's good a, style. Yeah, yeah. That's old well, colonizer. I think my mom may shit. have been the maid. I don't know why <laughs> I've heard this story, but like... Are you serious? Is this a... I don't know. Are you, are you being serious? Shit, You're not fucking like, with me? Her code name was Charlie. <laughs> and she would call and they would say, Charlie's on the phone and it's my mother. Are Name's you being Christine. serious right yeah, now? Serious. You're not lying. No. But that, like... How may, who, weird is Where this? did I hear the story? Right. I've heard it. Is it bullshit? Fuck I haven't asked or my memory is just shot. Well, you know, the other thing is, is that the people that are telling these stories now, like my mom's in her seventies. So I, you know, if I talk to her sister, who's a little bit older, also in her seventies, the story's different, but the same, like, Oh no, they fell in love and they're this or that or the other thing. It wasn't a maid as much as it was like a lady who lived in the house in the yard. See, dude, how do I not know this? Like, yeah. how do I not know? Like, I live with my mom. I hear so many stories, but maybe I'm just like, just, there's so much, so many stories. Man. It's weird to find out though, too, right? Like it was, it was a game changer for me to find that out. Cause I was like, fuck, I didn't realize my mom was like kind of one of those kids that had like, you know, like helpers around all the time. Like yeah. that just doesn't compute. All of a sudden, my mom is a different person to me. You know what I mean? Like, her life was different than I thought it was. Completely different. But then, uh, you, what it makes me realize is that I don't... Okay, so I don't know my kids. I've lived with my kids for 24 years. You know, their whole life. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with them. Like, I really don't. Like, I don't know... They. I, I know what they put out there, yeah. so I know them fairly well but I don't know that much about what's going on inside. I have no access to the inside experiences, what they're, what they're thinking and how they're doing. And then I realized somehow I don't even have that about myself. Like, I don't know what I was thinking 20 years ago. Like, I have no idea who I was back then, right? Like, think about when you I, moved exa- to Whistler. I know exactly what you're saying. Right? You think of who you were when you moved to Whistler, the things you were thinking, the way you were yeah. thinking. Is that you now? 
There's a through I line. wonder, like, like my mom living with my mom right now. Like she's seen some. She's learning. She's getting to know me. Like, and mm. we know each other now. Like, mm-hmm. Way crazier than before. Now she sees like all the shit. Because we're roommates, pretty much. And like, yeah, thinking back, trying to look back in time and be, and knowing how maybe, not crazy, but like, I'm figuring shit out. It's pretty amazing. Was I, what was going on back then? Like, what was in my brain? Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting to, I don't even know how to say it, but like, Like, who was I back then? Like, what, like what, what the fuck was that? And like knowing what you know now and using the knowledge you have now, you, you have now and trying to put it in your brain back then. Did you know the same shit? Yeah. Like, I have a hard time now thinking about, like, I don't know when it, it was when we got, when we got these phones, right? Like, remember being resistant to them? Like, I don't know about you, but I was like, I'm not getting a fucking yeah, phone yeah, just because everyone has a phone. phone. I remember someone showing me it's called an app and you can get an app and an app does things like this one. Like, look, if I press this button, it tells us what song is playing right now. And I was like, that's kind of neat. But how much is it a month? A hundred dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. Are you insane? Dude, I fought the phone forever. I fought the phone for I, a very long time. And I got one time. of these N-Gage, they were called. N-Gage and you is. could play video games on it. Oh, cool. Someone ended up giving it to me. Anyway, yeah, yeah I, I definitely fought the phone. So I had like a candy bar and a flip phone and all that. But when I think back to like what it was before, I can't even really remember before phones now because it's, they're so ubiquitous. They're so much a part of every... I'm driving somewhere. I'm fucking with my phone. I'm in a line. I'm watching something. I'm listening to a podcast while I'm fucking going. I, I, I listened to a podcast today in the shower. I was like, I'm not going to take my headphones out in the fucking shower today. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, that's where it's gotten to for me. And I, if I think back, like if I had to guess off top of head, how long ago did phones become like everything in my life? 20 years. But then if you go to 2004, we didn't even have phones. It's what, it's been five years. I don't know how I many know. years. It was the first year. How many years? I don't know. We're at iPhone 15. 2010 doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's 14 years ago. That'd be iPhone yeah, yeah. one or something. That was when we were still fighting against the shit. Oh yeah. Instagram kind of started. Yeah. 2011, 12 or something. Should I go to the bathroom again? If yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. Good. I definitely have to. Yeah. Do it. I'm fine. Do it. Ah! This year I quit my job and I found myself listening to you talk about like, you know, waking up and being like, I can't go to work today. You know what I mean? Like I don't have a, I don't have a job anymore, so I can't go there. I went there once in the seven months that I quit. It felt so weird to Where be was like that? going in. Canada Post. Oh, yeah, I think so. Going to, yeah, going to the post office, and everyone's in their uniforms, and I'm in my regular clothes, and I'm not technically allowed in there anymore, you know what I mean? And I'm like, this is fucking weird. For the first month, I just kept myself so busy with just busy work that I was like, this is worse than having a job. Cause when I had a job, I could just, the, the job ended at some point. <laughs> this is like, never ending. Yeah. But then at about a month in, I was like, <clears throat> yeah, I guess I can just do whatever I want. So you're full blast podcast. Seven months of no job except podcast. And, th- and it's a seasonal podcast. And you're one of the last five episodes of the season. I've cashed all the you're checks. You're pumping them out like one a week or what? Yeah, I do one a week. 25, 25 a season. So I've got four more after you. Dara Reed and Jeeves, hopefully. Nice. Austin Sweeten. Nice. It'd be sick to get Rob and Van Jin in there too because, I mean, they live together. We might as well do it. I'm going to Legends of Tahoe, so there's going to be like 100 dudes down there. And maybe I'll just keep pumping out episodes to keep it going. But then I've already cashed all the checks. Like now I'm out of money. Like that, it's a good job for half the. <laughs> so what's next? I bought this pro- property in Belize. Oh, no way. And I'm going to subdivide it and sell it. So if you're I going can, down. 
yeah, I mean, I'm not going to live there. No, no, no. I'm just going to go work. You know, worst case scenario, we have a place that we just go on vacation. Best case scenario, I sell a bunch of them and each time I sell it, I don't have to work any for another month or two or something or a year. <laughs> I don't know. Nice. That's a good move. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, like I see in you, like you channeled some of your dad's energy there with the entrepreneurship, right? Like oh, you're not. He, I'm a full hustler yeah, like my dad. Hustler. Yeah. Right. When did you, did you ever have a job when you were in Whistler? Like, did you start? Oh yeah. The, well, I've been like, the Sushi minute Village I moved to Whistler, I, uh, I was looking for a job. Yeah. Yeah. I cleaned, uh, I was a day cleaner busser slash busser yeah. at Roundhouse. So what, t- what was the hours on that? Did you ride that the morning? It was a full day shift. It was Ugh, shit. But that's then the, the worst night job. guy. Yeah. Troy, who I ran into at Splits Grill, he's still working at the mountain. This is fucking crazy. I saw him. Anyways, he he didn't like the night shift, so he swapped it out. You guys just swapped jobs. Just swapped jobs. Like, like as hey, if he wants to like... take mine, I'm taking his. And <laughs> they were like, totally that. fine. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I worked the night shift, and I got to shred every single day. That's the dream. Yeah. That's a dream. I remember the, there were some cherry gigs. Yeah. Sushi Village seemed to be a good one yeah, to get. I never with. got into the like that. The I never served, never bust, never worked. There was in a the pizza kitchen. place. There was a pizza place. Misty, that Mountain, was, Misty Mountain was really good. Yeah. Like a legendary spot to any to delivery shred. job was wicked in West. Delivery, like, yeah. I delivered pizza taxis. For a while. taxis. The, the taxis was anything. was not bad, from what I hear. Yeah. That's crazy. Anything that would let you shred. Who? Okay, let's let's go through who you moved out with because it's just for the listeners, for the people up in Whistler that uh, like know these names. Like, yeah. What, so I moved out. Well, my uh, like I said, my two two of my best friends, Mike Hart, Dave Gottdanker, had moved out already. I was in CJAP grade eleven or whatever they twelve in Quebec. Yeah. And I. Did a year, I was freaking out. They were out here and I was like, I gotta go. So I asked my mom, she said, okay. And I jumped in the car with three other friends, Andrew Ayub, Oliver McDonald, and Jay Drager. They all had girlfriends except for Oliver. Anyways, we drove across Canada. I remember like leaving Munch or the province of Quebec and like crossing. I saw, remember the sign like, welcome to Ontario. And I was like, holy fuck, this is it. Like, I'm out of here. And we took a nice long drive. Well, it was, yeah, it was probably a week. We fought. We It was chaos the whole way. Like, <laughs> Wait, you're already fighting on well, the Well, yeah, out. Winnipeg. We, we were in Winnipeg, got smashed. We lost someone. Anyways, we were, it was, <laughs> there was a lot of fucking horse shit. But uh, we made it. I remember, I wish I could remember. I remember seeing the Welcome to Whistler sign, but I, you know, I can't really remember where, like, I didn't know where I was. Yeah. Where did we stay that night? I, maybe we stayed at the boot. Like, I really don't know. <laughs> but uh, two of the friends that had girlfriends ended up, like, going to Vancouver or something. And we stayed behind, me and Oliver, and waited for the job fair for Whistler Black Home or something. So this is school's out, summer's yeah, happening. It's September. You get there before it the, was like September. Yeah. You get there I was still time. seven or eighteen. Yeah, so you can't even drink. Can't even drink. Yeah, and uh, but in Montreal or in Quebec, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I remember camping at Calchek. We slept there for a few, maybe a couple of weeks, <laughs> and then uh, we ended up getting a room at the Boot for a month or two. Me and Oliver, holy fuck, we fought so much. It was were, so. Were early. they any? Were they any good? Those boot rooms, or were they? I don't shit? know. We were eighteen. We didn't give a shit. Yeah, I think it was fine. Honestly, yeah. we shared. I shared a bed, probably. Yeah. And uh, waited for staff housing to happen. better. Better than sleeping in a tent. Much yeah. better. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, we got our jobs and then we got staff housing. What was the fighting? Just like friends, like teenage friends? Yeah, we were friends just like... Fighting about this, fighting about that? <laughs> I don't know if Oliver remembers. I don't know if he'll ever listen to this, but like... Yeah. Maybe it was chess. Like, I don't even know. Maybe it was chess and we just beat each other for beating each other in chess. I fucking don't I know. I remember taking a road trip at that it age. Was pretty bad. And, and we had a fight that was semi-serious in a hotel room. My friend Craig, Chris, and I 
and a lamp got broken and buckets of water were poured on beds like it oh, was man, like it was gnarly we had like a fucking I'm surprised he didn't full on fight me. yeah yeah you're just a kid you're just like doing... i was a fucking twerp and yeah. oliver's yeah. fucking fists man <laughs> anyways so you were frenemies or this is we like friends. one of your best friends you know me and oliver never we weren't like uh, super tight when we left right maybe i don't know we were friends for sure but a was my friend j was my friend and those two split. So me and Oliver stuck it out. We got jobs at the mountain, staff housing. I think he was cooking. I was doing that thing. So there was like different shifts, different shifts. Yeah. And, uh, and then I got the night shift, man. And we so were just riding who gets every day. the camera? When do you get a camera and start filming? Uh, pretty early, probably. 97 98 we were like fuck we're pretty good or or i don't even know but after, like sean after, do you remember yeah. a guy named sean hughes he was a, he was I, a photographer for i remember the name and i yes he, he, he was like i'm gonna get a camera we'll take pictures of you and we bought a little digital camera i guess in 97 oh yeah and yeah and and uh oh no it wasn't digital it was like full vhs yeah, yeah. oh yeah 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 like a, a you mean a camcorder i remember like editing yeah. with the vhs tapes. tape and i tapes. made this movie called bad on black home bad uh, on black yeah, yeah. Home. <laughs> can we find that is there no, someone my, who has they it? lost it abby oh, lost no. it i don't know there was like one copy yeah Oh, and it was like fuck. tons of park shredding sick dim uh, the odell oh, brothers wow uh, Anyways, that's right. We did that. And then uh, there was a moment where this French dude from Quebec, JF Durache, I'm pretty sure was his name, was like, hey, we're out here. We want to make a movie. Uh, do you guys want to f- film out there and we'll put it in the movie? So Mike started filming. Uh, we, were, we were filming each other. And, uh, and they put out a movie. I think it was called revelation and it was like one of those movies where you have some footage actual footage and then you have like uh contest footage and you put them in the movie like oh travis rice is in the movie but he's just (laughs) you know someone went to a contest contest. that travis was at so it's that style i love that let's get the big name in there but he's just there like he has no idea totally yeah so we uh started there i guess with that and uh there were a couple of years of those, and then, uh, and then I kind of like graduated to the to to an to the upper to one step further. The up, next I one guess. up, sure, sure. <laughs> With treetop or tree, t- tree yeah. t- and treetop had transitioned at the time to Rick Johnston style rather than the Brad McGregor Curtis Croy yeah. style. Well, so that was a transition here. It was yeah. Those guys had bounced from treetop. What was the name of the movie? What one was uh, the that? The first one? one Rick did under the treetop was uh, Foreplay. Yeah, yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, because it went uh, clear cut. Yep. Second degree, third degree burns, and then he called this one Foreplay. Oh, I yeah, I I would have known. I and then I know all the movies, yeah. and I and they played in the shop. Yeah. See anything that had like local riding in it would make it on the rotation. Yeah. Right. In the shop, because we were aspiring to be like we were the guys under you, right? Like the shop guys are not even filming for movies, yeah. But they're like, we have all the gear and we get and, we and can they're talk right about here, it. like all those dudes yeah. are around, yeah. like it's kind of sick. It's it's pretty. It is a rad scene, yeah. And then so you know we'd be in the shop, you know, the top tier pros would come through sometimes, need something. Yeah. Hey, can I trade these? You know, like, yeah, yeah, take whatever you want. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. So that, Treetop was legit. Those Treetop, were good movies. Treetop, to me, was legit. It was like the start of the backcountry game, really. Mm-hmm. But I could be wrong. No, you're... I, 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 I Just because I live here and I'm like, whoa, but, you know... Yeah, I don't know they, what their they, reach was, right? Like, I, I think it was fucking pretty big. Yeah, yeah. I kind of equate them with the... Um, Hostinek movies, which keep yeah. going now. Like yeah. they were on that same. It was level. the same. There was only like two or three. It was like uh, Jamie Mosberg. Yep. Did you do a podcast with him? Mm-hmm. I think I listened to it. Yeah. 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 He was like, he He's made amazing. the best fucking movies, man. So fun. Yeah. I I thought he yeah. Milk he was, was one an of my old favorites. old school skater. 
like the if you, if you know this the movie Skaters from Uranus, it's it's an old bad boy club movie, and it's his ass that's on the cover of the, nice. like he was a skater at the time, dude's fucking OG, yeah, yeah. and super nice. So Milk was a movie that uh, John Cartwright came into the shop one time and was like, I gotta find a copy of Milk. Where do I get a copy of Milk? And we couldn't find it anywhere. YouTube. Oh, now it's out. Yeah. yeah. I had one copy in Brockle Bank. Or was it Brockle Bank? I think he borrowed it and I never got it back. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the best. Like, fuck, man. That really backcountry snowboarding opened up right there for me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, in, in Mouse's interview, he I, I wouldn't have thought this before, but he basically said, you know, you film with these guys like Devin and your movie's good. And then you call him the next year and you go, Dev, where are we going? And he's like, look, I'm shooting with Mac Dog this year. And you're like, asshole? Like, <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Not asshole. You're like, oh, dude. Thanks, like, Thanks, oh, well, good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. My movie could be good, too. Mm -hmm. You know, if you film with me, then I got all your footage. Dude, those were wicked. Golden Circle Awards. Mm. 1999, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Oh, you and Jody are the video guys hey like, i hey. fuck it he's insane he's after insane. You're watching jody's podcast yeah. on the bomb hole like fuck, yeah man. yeah the kid's nuts those guys are nuts mm -hmm. like i've lost my nerd out mm -hmm. but like i know where it started for me or whatever those movies but man de i've definitely lost touch oh god there's way too much now it's not like how it was before like the best shit that i've seen this year was not in movies it was just Insta clips. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really hard to come by a good movie these days. Something that's your, that you're gonna rewatch, mm -hmm. like over and over and over mm. again. They're so hard to come by. I, I I'm blown away at. I actually I don't even know what kind of money goes into what people are getting into now. Mm -hmm. But like, I just don't see myself rewatching anything anymore, except for Rusty's movies, because I love his soundtrack. Snowboarding's great. I watch it every single day. Really? But like... The Man Boys stuff. Man Boys, every year, Rusty... May, you know, snowboarding's great. Music yeah. is great. Yes. It's hard to come by good music. That's true. Joy did it for me mm -hmm. with uh, mm -hmm. whatever. That was Sage and Red or whatever. Yeah. Know what said. Yeah. But other than that, it's like... What do I watch, everyone? It's <laughs> fucking tough. It's not like it used to be. It's not like it used to be. It's not. I and I keep, that. yeah, I keep saying it's like that brands are creating, you know, building their own content. So then there is no incentive to cut anything, but it, it's also the music rights thing too. Yeah. Music's a big one, right? Like if mm -hmm. you, and, but when ugh, I still, I watch things and I'm like, how do you, with the music that's going, like, how do you wake me up? <laughs> like, you're like, what are you doing? I don't get it, but <laughs> fuck, maybe I'm crazy. You could be like, old. you need to be like, get fired up, man. And go fired shred up. for the first, the day, uh, the day before I broke this wrist yeah, or whatever I did. Um, I listened to music for the first, I listened to music with earphones one day, maybe 10 years ago. Like I know what kind of music I like, but it wasn't the same as last week. Like what the hell, man? You got to figure out the music or you're just going to put people to sleep. Okay. So you were just saying you haven't listened to music in headphones. I've never just, listened to music just in headphones. Just to listen to and music. And just the style. I yeah. was listening to like techno. Okay. Mall Grab was the, the first one. Like I could play it. And I, I was like yeah, by myself. Yeah, I'll put it behind and this. I oh, and then we'll get a strike and I can't. Yeah, no, no, no. Go listen to Mall Grab. You loved it. Yeah, I, I remember. It. Okay, think about this. Like early no effects pennywise um it's gotta be like the same right th like. that uh offspring remember early offspring like it would just like yeah. get you going like see that no honestly i didn't know actually even what you're saying yeah i delivered pizza for five years with no stereo in my truck that's oh, how much wow. i gave a fuck about music like, right I, right i really i like music but i didn't care i wasn't like hearing it yeah or something, but now, like, something's changed for me. Like, music is number one. Wow. In my life. My brother plays in a huge rock, well, pretty de big rock band, Can of Broken Social Scene. Yeah. And uh, I went on tour with him, 
hung out. I didn't know anything. I didn't know music. Like I listened to music, but I didn't ever really feel the effects that it had on right. people right. till I went on that tour and like sitting on the side and just, or, or like hearing people in the bathrooms, like so fired up about the music and yeah. how much they enjoyed it or just some crazy feeling that gave you goosebumps that, that I never really had before. Right. Right. And now like that's all I want. Like, where uh, did that come from? I don't know. Well, maybe cause I figured out that I like fucking dance beats or techno or some shit. Sure. Sure. Like I'm fully you found your like, music. it fucking grabbed wakes you. me up. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. It's pretty. Okay. I mean, so you just buried the lead there. Your brother's in broken social brother scene. Is in broken social scene. Isn't that a huge band? Huge like band. big. Yeah. They're, they're doing is it big Canadian maybe, big maybe, or is it big uh, American big? All over the world. Fuck. Yeah, like he's been everywhere. Russia, you name it. They're yeah. traveling. There's yeah. a following. And where 100%. are they from? Where's the band from? It's a huge collective. Yeah. I'm going to say from Montreal, Toronto. Yeah. Mainly Toronto. So it's Canadian. like metric. Yeah. Uh, uh, Feist. Oh, shit. They're all part of it. It's like a no. group. No, wow. They've been doing this for 20 plus years. Fuck yeah. And my brother came in and they asked him to join in 2007. Sick. And that's his full time gig. Yeah. Well, he's not, not so much right pizza. now. I mean, they're still doing things like the odd show, but they're not like touring. I mean, I guess they did just do a tour, but not like, yeah. what do I know? But he did just do a tour. It's not, uh, he's got it. He has another job. He works in film. Okay. But uh, back in 2007, they were touring like nonstop. That's fucking badass. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I got to go. He asked me to go on it when he first signed out here. <laughs> My mom told me that he had signed up with this band and it started with social something. Social. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Social distortion. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah, no yeah, way. Dope, My brother's dope. in social distortion. This is insane. <laughs> and then it was broken social scene. I didn't really, I've heard of them. I didn't really know. It's a little more mellow for sure. Yeah. Anyways, he, yeah, I'm stoked for him. He's stoked. And where he, uh, I went on tour with him for, a European tour and a U.S. tour. Sick. And yeah, they're full on. It was a, it's a wild lifestyle. Not super wild, but like super busy and like it's, you're going full blast. Yeah. 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 Town to town. Town to production. town. Depend, like Europe, you're okay. We're done. Pack the stage, load the bus and we got to drive 10 hours. Jesus. The U.S. was city to city. It was a couple hours. It wasn't yeah, that yeah. crazy, but. And how, what big, uh, what size of crowds are these? Like stadium crowds? Mm-mm. Like no, they let's PNE say they do Commodore three nights in a row. Commodore, yeah, that's sick. So they do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or something. That's fucking awesome. Uh, Two thousand, three thousand people. Yeah, that's if I remember correctly. Like New York City was, that Webster Hall is probably like two to three thousand. Sick. Yeah, it was wicked. They're doing great. What a, was it? A crazy lifestyle? Maybe you don't want to, you know, like it wasn't the, with like groupies and no. Coming like from the outside, coming in, that's yeah. what I thought. I'm like, totally. I'm like, what is going to go on on the tour? You know, I thought that about the forum team, like talking with Devin yeah. about it. Like, it must have just been girls throwing themselves at you the whole time. And he's like, not really. <laughs> but he was married, so maybe yeah. he doesn't want to talk about it. It wasn't that wild. Like, you can't bring people, we couldn't bring people on the bus. Cause we're leaving like, yeah, mm -hmm. we're going 10 hours. See you later. So the, the, the show starts, it plays, people come out, line up to meet them. And it's you're like, packing the bus. Sorry guys. And you meet and wherever girl, you could party. And the girl's great. like, yeah, the girl's like, like you asked, yeah. we were partying. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It was fun. Yeah. But it's like what you're going to, you're going to after party at a show promoters place and playing more instruments or going back to yeah, hotels with people. We went to a couple of houses yeah. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> of super fans and those people's minds were blown. Yeah. They're like, I can't believe you guys are at my fucking house. Exactly. Yeah. We went, it was Halloween <laughs> and, uh, we left a bar in Portland. My brother, uh, Colin Adair, my, a friend of mine, Molly and, uh, Jimmy from metric, the guitarist, well from Broke Toasting. Yeah. And we went to a house. It wasn't even a party. It was Molly's house. And we were just kind of hanging out. And those guys, there was a guitar. And they start jamming out. And then the roommate comes down like, what the fuck? Who, what are you guys doing in my house? Like, amazing. 
That was one incident. It was pretty cool. That's fucking There was one sick. where we were in, I think it was Atlantic City, played the show. We went to the casino, played some blackjack. And then earlier in the day, my brother, we were in a record shop and they recognized the band or whatever. I don't know what happened, but next thing you know, we get a call while we're playing blackjack. We're going to play that house party or this. Amazing. And we all packed up our shit, went to this bar, whatever it was. And I remember being in the bathroom and like people tripping out, like the broken social scenes here. They're playing. It's a surprise. No one even knows what's happening. It's a free show. Like get down here and everybody's freaking out and the goosebumps are happening. Like people are so fired up. It was wicked. That was a, yeah, it was a good experience for the seven weeks I had there. I would have totally, I sucked at tune. I, I had to tune guitars. That was your job. Before I left, yeah. I didn't know that was my job. Okay. But the day before I left, my brother's like, man, you got to figure out how to tune a guitar. I sucked. I've never, I tried, I sucked. And I'm like tuning guitars on the side of the stage, handing it to them. Like it was so, I felt so horrible. I love honestly. you so much, dude. It was so Your bad. Your life is It was best. so bad to the point where like, at one point I could hear Kevin, this lead singer, he's like, we're going to get your brother to Paris and then he's got to go. And I was like, oh man, I didn't, like, I got to go. I don't know what I'm going to do. I got three more weeks or two more weeks. And then, uh, so I busted my ass, setting the stage up, putting the water, doing whatever I could, you know? <laughs> and then by the time I got to Paris, they're like, you're coming. And next thing you know, I'm doing the U.S. tour. It was pretty wicked. You're not tuning. You didn't bust your ass learning how to tune. You're like, I can make myself I still tune every show. Right. But you're like... But I suck. But, but you still sucked but, at yeah. the tuning. I had to do... You, I had to like, you were make hustling. up for somewhere else. You were... Oh, I made up. I my brother was it. super lazy. He was like running around and I was packing up the gear. I love it. That's the best, dude. Yeah, that's... It is oh. wild when you're, when you're traveling with a group or... I mean, not that I've ever done that, but I've... I've done production stuff with a group where, you know, to be above the median, there's a lot of people standing around a lot of the time, right? <laughs> so you could just like, oh, this shit needs to be packed up or let's stack these yeah, chairs, yeah. move these out of the way. Will that yeah. work? And then if you do that in front of the right people, the guys are like, this guy's indispensable. We need this yeah, guy. Yeah, like you didn't have to pay me and they ended up paying me. Oh, that's rad. That's super rad. And like I totally, that's where I thought, like my snowboarding was close. It was coming to a close maybe. And uh, I was like, maybe tour managing would be cool. <laughs> because I could see pretty much the same thing that I was doing for myself, you know, like managing my fucking career. Right, and I, right. I could easily take care of, well, in my mind, like the responsibilities of a tour manager. So how do you pick the painting that. thing? Do you like to paint? Was that a thing that you liked to do? Or was it just, this is an opportunity? It was... Uh, I know the story from the, from the from air Jody, time, actually. Yeah. But honestly, I don't know if I talked about this part in the story. when I, I Maybe I did. Doesn't matter. But I, I came home from my first year in Whistler, going mm -hmm. back, and uh, I needed a job. And my girlfriend at the time, her dad had friends, and they were like, oh, they need this garage painted okay and i went and all they gave me was a brush oh no and they wanted to wanted me to paint a metal door it had like a panels on it but i remember in my mind going like this stroke has to be continuous like you don't want to see brush strokes you can't just like thrash this wicked metal door with <laughs> brush strokes like that was my mentality then sure and then uh, maybe the same year, my dad, we watched this infomercial where you, you like suck paint out of this can and put it into your roller. And I was like, maybe I should paint the ceiling in the dining room. And we bought this machine. So like there was something, what? there was something, and I was like 18. Infomercial, that's amazing. Yeah. But really when I, like I didn't think about painting forever until uh, my friend Sean was just, if you need some side work, because I wasn't really doing anything. And I would paint and I, I understood it, like what it, I understood what it took to make it look good, I guess. And, and then more than that, you understood the relationship with the customer, that there's a, there's a, there's a naivete to somebody that needs to get something painted. They don't know how much it costs to paint a thing. Yeah. Well, I did, yeah. I didn't, so then I, you have to be. I wouldn't know. I had to learn, like I pretty much pricing. taught myself from the 
ground up. Like I really, I had right. no fucking clue. I remember um, doing my first, it was uh, Mathieu Forcier, if he listens to this. He's like, <laughs> oh, this couple, a friend or something next, my neighbor is looking to get their place done. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. How much is this going to cost? What is this? And so I remember rolling out a gallon of paint. And yeah. How long did that take me? Okay, it took me two hours to roll a gallon. How many gallons? Uh, how many square feet are in a gallon? 400 square feet per gallon. How many? And then I measure the wall space and I'm like, okay, well, this is how much wall space. This is how much paint I need. And this is how long it takes me to paint one gallon. You know what yep, I mean? I got you. So that's, that's how I broke that down. That's the only part of school I remember, like solving these problems. <laughs> yeah. And like, that was one of them, like, oh, I got this. Do, 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 do. Okay, wicked. And, and then we just started and kept, because I made so much money on that job. It made no sense to me. Right. But I cheaped out on the paint. Okay. I ended up doing three more coats than I had to because the paint was so shit. Yeah. Like I had to cover instead of two, I had to do five or something. And yep. I still made money. And I was like, holy fuck, like, this is pretty wicked. I only have to do a couple of these a year or whatever. I didn't really care. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was still shredding. And, uh, and then it just slowly, the momentum kept going and word of mouth. People like this guy, my friend, my Matt house, Morgan really at the well. time. Do you remember yeah. Matt Morgan? Matt Morgan. I, he was I a builder. Name. And like, you want to get in with the builders. Chris Adario was a builder and like Matt was a good friend of mine from snowboard or whatever from life. Yep. And he had a company and he was giving me all his contracts for the new builds. And Right. So now you're not even dealing with the customer. He's like, I'm building this house. I and definitely I'm doing was still thing. dealing with customers. Okay. For a lot. Like I was okay. coming to Vancouver. I was fucking sleeping in my truck and just like wherever I could get work. That's where I was going. I didn't mind coming to the city. Like, yeah, you know, I did Jeff Andrick's house. I slept in my truck or I found places to sleep. Sick. Just like it, I'm so happy that I don't have to do that anymore. Right. Like that was a fucking pain in the ass, but, uh, <laughs> it got me like now I'm cruising right. just with the new construction. Like we're in, there's no getting out now. Oh, that's sick. It's pretty awesome for sure. How many years did that take from Jeff Andrick's place to doing a, or like from that so first, I'm those gonna first go, jobs? Uh, we are at one, two, three, four, five, six. I think we're six. We've been in, incorporated for six years. Yeah. Seven. And you did the whole thing. You, you, you've registered the company, incorporated yeah. the whole thing. You do the write off yeah. and the corporate. It was probably taxes. 2007 when I, well, that's 17 years ago. That's a lie then. So 2007 was when I almost had that baby. <laughs> But like, what's that story? Oh, 2010, Helen was still there. So it was probably more like 22, it was probably like five years of just uh, self employed, running around, paying some cash here and there to people to work and just doing it like that, making probably 30, 40,000 a year, whatever. Still not bad money. Not all. bad. But yeah. I was definitely like, man, it was 20. I'm going to say the start was 25 bucks an hour kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. You're paying someone 20, making five bucks. Yep. Uh, and so he did that for yeah, probably like seven years. And then, I, and then I made like so much money. I had no idea that because you were just so busy. I didn't know. And then yep. I, went, I had to pay tax. Yep. And it was massive. <laughs> I was like, well, how did I not see this coming? And that's what I had to incorporate. Yep. Yeah, because you got to write off all the fucking expenses. You just got to keep a business account. It's there. a smart way to do it, and then keep yep. yourself out of it. Pay yourself a wage, yeah, and, exactly, and, and let the company it do its thing yeah. and pay tax on. Yeah. yeah, rich dad, poor dad, shit. I remember reading that book. I and never going, read it, man. It's I pretty. It. It's pretty basic stuff. It's just basically the difference between assets and liabilities, right? Like rich people don't think about buying Ferraris and shit like that. Wealthy people don't. Rich, you know, you can look rich and not be rich. You could have lots of loans. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wealthy people are like building assets that are just throwing off money. They write a book. Mm -hmm. And then every time the book is published again, they're making more money. That's the way they, lo they look at things. You buy a house. It doesn't matter that it's not in your name. You put it in your wife's name so you're not paying any taxes. And then you rent it out and... It's the, and, and you live in your truck. Like, that's the thing. <laughs> Is it because living in your truck? Look at, look at uh, the wild man from West Squamish. No. Up the Squamish Valley Road. 
Who? Marte Gallant? Mart, Martin. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Like, he's like the epitome of that. He built his nice cabin. Someone says you can Airbnb it out. I'll live in my camper. Oh, Fuck, yeah. I lived in my camper the whole time. Yeah, nice. Like, yeah, he's, he's a maniac. He's but awesome. he's wealthy. Like he's because, loaded. He can't he's believe wealthy. it. He's like, wow, yeah. I just crushed it. Just he's wealthy because, because that's the wealthy mindset is like, I don't give a shit if I'm living in a, in a camper or a fucking tent or whatever and working hard and building yeah. something that's like fucking rad. His yeah, I wish, cabin I've never been. As shit. Really? I've never been to his up the valley. I've never, no. It's but I've so, heard so nice. Much. It's really, and, and it's him, you know what I mean? It's like he made it. It's like. Yeah, he's done well. Great. Yeah, yeah. Was he was he a big character out there when you first moved out? No. Well, I I didn't There's, know him for a few years. It was always yeah. just like Pelshat and the boys, Gaetan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure Martin was there. Well, there's but, a like, difference. I didn't get to know him for a few years. Between like the Whistler scene of people that care about the Whistler scene, like there's some people that are out there. They're like, I'm making it in Whistler, and then there's some people that are just like, I'm fucking Whistler. I'm making it happen in Whistler, right? Moving to Pemberton, getting yeah. sleds, doing all that kind of stuff. So has it always been like that? That's what it looks like to an outsider. <sighs> Guess. I mean. <laughs> right? Like I, when I'm thinking of early Whistler, like Dano and the, J- Sean and Sean and, and Nick's and those guys, like it, it meant something to be the biggest deal in Whistler. Like people cared about that, but then eventually, you yeah outgrow that thing. It's, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm I have guessing. no idea. It's kind of, those dudes are like before my time, right? way before, right? Well, not that's, way, but like I remember just being terrified of every of everybody. <laughs> I remember being terrified going up there too. Like it's, they had a reputation, like they would just like, beat oh. the shit out of you. <laughs> now Nix is like one of my best friends, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like they were just like the next year up, and you're. We're looking up. I remember like riding the chairlift one day, probably going to work to clean toilets. And like, I can't say 100% it was them in the gondola, but I'm pretty sure it was Kearns, Johnson, and Sansalone. Mm-hmm. Mainly mm. because I saw a lot of Santa Cruz. Yep. But I still didn't know, but you knew, you know? Totally. And I was like, I was that. I was just behind schedule. Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But you're on Next Generation to too, watch. right? Like that's a hard thing. For, you know, guests of the show early on talking about like seeing that next thing happening where you're at a photo shoot, and you know, that kid is better, like so much better. Like, and I'm not going to do that. Kevin, <laughs> KY, Kevin Young was talking about driving out to some jump somewhere and watching people commuting into town to go to their jobs and just being like, I think I want a job. (laughs) I don't think I want to go out here and do this again because it's getting bigger and it's, there's trick. Like, you know, when you're, when your trick is like a seven and you're like better than everybody else. And then somebody does a 10, you're like, Oh fuck. I don't even have a nine yet. Yeah. What are you going to do? Right. And you were at that at some point hungry younger generation faster better than the bigger I mean, tricks than the old guys definitely hungry but uh yeah not that hungry there's I guess, a, like we just did we were just boarding yeah yeah I'm just trying to think of t- moments where I was like trying new tricks and like really fucking trying to learn things. You didn't have a season where you were like, okay, I'm not hurt. The jumps are good. I'm riding every day. I'm trying new shit. I'm fucking, oh, my sponsors are t- telling me I'm going to be in these movies. That kind of, those kinds of years. I don't think I did it right. On a, like, I just don't remember like going to like training you know i don't know if that makes no it makes totally sense. makes like, I don't, sense i just remember like shredding 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 yeah and and trying new tricks while you're filming i guess like man i don't know what i'm what i'm thinking about right now. <laughs> no I, 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 this but is like, the real shit like this is it like there's 
some guys are hungry like i'm gonna get the fucking biggest sponsors i'm gonna do the biggest tricks yeah, i'm gonna be in the biggest me. movies i'm gonna do this 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 and this some people are riding hoping and some people who would be great in those movies are riding hoping waiting for someone to discover them you know what i mean like hey i'm doing pretty good in the park here is there anybody around that wants to you fucking- know what it was for me i i remember uh doing uh we would do the local contests and then my crew like my home, t- all the boys I came with, and my best friends, Mike, Dave, like, they didn't go on the little contest tour. Mm-hmm. Like, I would fly home by myself, uh, steal my brother's van or my dad's van, and drive to Stoneham by myself, no crew. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. no no JFJS home, and, like, uh, uh, John Roth and the boys, they had their crew, JS, the French crew, and, them, and, like, I'm just doing this solo tour, like, I'm going to sleep in my van. I'm going to do this contest, see how I do. And I'm going to go to Blue Mountain. I'm going to do that. And I'm all by, I'm alone. Okay. So like my crew wasn't fucking doing this, but I could, I could feel the, the, or I would just hear the microphone guy and he's like, yeah, man, that guy's ripping. I do the vans tour. And just hearing that gave me like, I do, I am pretty good or something. You sure. know what I mean? Yes, yes, of course. I remember the, the vans tours, uh, the vans, what was it called? Vans Triple Warped Crown? Tour. Vans Triple Crown. Yeah. It was yeah. Breckenridge. Yeah, those, and I did oh, the border wow. cross and yeah, the badass. big air and the pipe. And there wasn't very many people doing it all. And like, I was pretty fast. I was border cross, like whatever. I was good at it, even though something happened to my brain where I would make finals and just like fall or some shit. <laughs> but like, I would always hear them talking. You'd hear it on I'd the I'd hear my name like, this guy's been ripping all weekend. This guy's... And Don't. I was like, okay, maybe I'm fucking all right. Oh, you Whatever. were. And I just right. keep like, yeah. ri- just keep shredding, and but I never. I there wasn't a time where I was just like, I need to go get this, like train or I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say, but you just bored and try tricks. Well, I remember seeing you and Akasha at uh, when I got in the LBS, and the way that oh, yeah, you guys were, the way that you guys were oh, taking yeah, the 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 bank slum more seriously than the than the median i'd say you guys were like faster wax talking yeah, about we the definitely turns. Have the, the, the the juice yeah and and talking about the turns and strategizing together and and you put down fast times and i was like fuck these guys are taking it kind of serious you have to thanks well or, you know yeah, what yeah now I wish I took it even not more serious, but now I understand that race more now that I can't get in anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like we were cruising before where we weren't like, okay, qualify for finals, whatever, place top five or six. Yeah. You're always getting back in. Yeah. And then uh, that year that you're talking about, we both made finals. I like qualified first. And uh, that's right. You qualified first. Yeah. yeah I'm an idiot. <laughs> and then yeah. and then and then Curtis Cizik drops off a case of uh, one of some fruity drinks that were so gnarly, and <laughs> I ended up vomiting at like seven thirty p.m. Like four locos or something. I had like two margarita things. Okay, yeah. And then I smoked some weed with Ben Block, maybe. Sure. And uh, in the RV, and at seven thirty, I was like greened out, vomiting in the back, oh, and wow. woke up kind of like. What the fuck happened? And then Cashy was freaking out because, as you said, we're like kind of, and we want to make it. Cashy really wants to fucking get some duct tape. Right. So we're keen. We're nerding out together in the van. Or the and RV. it was like a buddy. You guys were buddies. Like yeah, it was like, you, you, yeah. yeah. It, and that's different than you going to these contests alone. Now all of a sudden, you got a friend and it's kind of fun and you're fucking oh, hanging yeah. with Meg Peaks. Baker is great. Yeah. Like if you sick. can get in, try to stay in. Like, Mm. I can't get in anymore mm. because I got wasted. Or not I not that I got wasted, but I um I talked to Seth Westcott about this and I was like trying to be we woke up hungover or mm. not really. I went to bed at 7:30 like I right. woke up little my brain fog was there and Cashy was freaking out. He's a freak. He's like, "Oh man, what did we do? What did we do?" And I'm like, "I went to bed at 7:30. What did you do?" And he kind of like wandered around and yeah. hung out. But uh, still, we didn't get smashed or anything. But uh, the I remember getting off the chair and there was a hip, a little hit on the right, and I aired and I was like, 
I'm fine. Like I, I, I my balance is there. Good to go. There. I'm okay. But we kept second guessing saying, Oh man, what did we do? It was so stupid. And then the third or the fifth turn in is like an icy. The th- I think it's the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe it's the sixth. It's it, like it the one that melted goes out. Back towards it's a the... right hand turn. Yes, yes, and yes. And it's yes. like there was like ice there. Yeah. And you people were eating shit and eating shit. And I was like, get stuck in my head. Okay, so what do we do? We just put in a run. We just like get through that thing, slow down, get through it. Next one, go full speed. Mm hmm. Getting through and then just having like the worst fucking score or time. Like, what did I do? Wait, what did you get? You didn't I don't get know. Like it just sucked. Oh, that first something. run sucked. Yeah. And then the second run, I fell. Oh, And God. my second, I fell. Oh, and I, no. get this, I fell and I, my time was better than my first. <laughs> so I was telling this story to Seth because we were painting his whoa, house. Whoa. And I was like, you just, you go full blast, right? You never be a bitch. You just, every mm. run is full mm. speed. He's like, yes. Mm. Yeah, so then if you fall, I will you're never second guess speed. that race. If I can ever get back in. Now I'm out. Yeah. I can't yeah. get in. Oh, that's a that's because brutal. I was a little fucking baby. <laughs> There's but a like, lot to full, it though. Full blast. There's all a lot the of shit going never on. Never be a bitch. Like, remember uh they used to have those Vancouver quarter pipe things? Back in the day, it was like ninety seven. Oh yeah. There was like a quarter pipe contest in the thing. Like in the like in the stadium. The, in the stadium, yeah. That was, I was before, there. That was yeah. right when I got on Nitro yeah. and like yeah. I didn't know anything. Like I, I wasn't that good. Sure. But I just want to like land a trick. And yeah. I was doing them like this high. Like yeah. yeah that, two feet off. It was so stupid. Like it was no one's going to fucking give a quarter shit. pipe. Right. Right. Why would I you try? You need to just fucking blast. Yeah. You just right, go full right, blast. Right, right. All the time. Who cares right. if you fall? As Westcott. As you... Westcott is, is a maniac. Yeah. He's amazing. Though anyone who gets to that level, like those like, you like just see it. super winners. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lame thing yeah. to call it. But He's like, an awesome. The yeah. Like, is like world champion, like a world champion guy. They're on another level and they're not thinking like, oh shit, that turn, I should slow down. Like you're saying, they're just oh, full man, blast. So many times. That's one thing I look back in the career, whatever, the contest career and getting so thrashed in my head. Mm. Just having so much fun practicing qualifying and then as soon as you get into finals my brain would go like this oh wow and i would shit my pants and i just eat shit oh wow so natasha zura got on burton from option right yeah she was on never maybe maybe she was never even on option it was pretty early on she got discovered by burton they were like this girl's fucking amazing but i don't know if it was the burton team or if she did it on her own but she got a mental coach. Yeah, good idea. Because that's what you fucking need. Right? Like, think about you with a mental coach. No, for coach. sure, 100%. It's then all of a sudden you're, you're this contest if you, yeah, monster. Man. I remember trying out for the, like, BC t- or C- Canadian snowboard team, I guess. Yeah. At Brome Ridge. Yeah. Uh, there was tryouts. We did it on the glacier. And then we ended up up there. And I remember sitting, having a meeting. Or, like, you, yeah, yeah you had, like, an interview with the guy. I think it was Colin White. Is that is that a name? Yes, that is a what. I think it was him. Name. Yeah, Colin White. Yeah. And uh, I think I remember saying like I I would love to have a coach mm. for my brain. Right. It, maybe it was Mindset. one of their questions, yeah. and that's I don't know what Mindset it was, but I remember coach, like yeah. I I I if I would have like it would have. Would have seen things differently for sure because, well, well, like, I really saw the worst all the time. So this is how I, I mean, I've interviewed like 200 snowboarders now or 150, whatever, and there's a real divide between the Travis Rice guy that wants to be the top guy, and then there are these guys, and I put you in this category that are like incredible riders that everybody just knows that you rip, but that the contest hierarchy wasn't like the big draw for you you're not going to just didn't understand it i guess or, right or or because being good and hearing people say like fuck you see that guy on fucking on hot jump or whatever fuck he just did a whatever whatever like people talking about it in town later on like fuck he did this like that's enough for some people to be like yeah i did that thing hmm. But you did it on your own terms. It's not like, okay, and up next, here he comes. All right, dropping in for the, you know, these sponsors and doing this thing and getting in your head of like, 
this hierarchy of of judgment right like it's like when you're writing for yourself you qualify first then once it's something's on the line yeah uh, pain in the ass weird not that weird actually but it's it, pretty like, normal how do you like if i could go back in time mm -hmm. what how could you make it different well what would you want like would you want to be a, a, a how could i not put so much pressure maybe or something Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like so much pressure i made it no problem easy fucking make it yeah into finals now that i'm here why can i not enjoy it or something like, why am i right why am i putting so much pressure on it like oh like what was that usually yeah it. usually it's like a young brother like the guy who makes it through is the young brother who's like trying to prove it to the older brother like look at me i'm better than you now you know what i mean like maybe you just didn't have that hey Hey everybody, I'm better than everybody. Vibe, you're just riding for yourself. So when it came down to it, it's like, eh. I, I don't know. know. You know what? I'm trying to fucking get in your brain on it. It's, yeah, it's I, sports psychology. That's why yeah. these guys have fucking coaches yeah, yeah. for their mental game. Yeah. Because like how do you just stay in the zone? Yeah, because everybody gets because like look at Mark, like look at fucking natural selection. Like yeah, those guys are. I bet you every single one of those people has a fucking mental coach. Yeah. Like you, you think I don't know. I'll ask Austin Sweeten. Like, do you have a coach for yeah, your that guy's fucking mindset? Just like, I'm having the best. Fucking he time looks ever. Like, like he's. You don't even the have to. Time. Like, yeah. why were you overthinking everything? Mm -hmm. You know, that's probably mm -hmm. what it was. Something just like totally overthinking. Oh my god, so much pressure. Oh my god, I could. I'm here. Be right. You're just gonna. Oh god. Right. You right. Know, like, but it's like fuck off. Like. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You made it here. You're fine. Like, just, just keep, keep doing, doing the same doing. thing. <laughs> like, well, that's idiot. what TJ said in his in his episode two weeks ago, was that Blue welcomed him to the team saying, okay, look, you're pro now. Everything has changed. Everything's different now. Now everyone at the hill is going to be gunning for you and watching everything you do. And if you fall, you're fucked. It was like, and maybe I'm saying it the wrong way, but it was like, that's the opposite of what you tell yeah. your guy. You're pro because you're you, right? So it's the same thing. If your head was going, all right, we did it. We qualified first. Let's just do that again. How fun was that? Let's do this and fucking yeah, maybe we'll bizarre. win. But I could see it. You, you guys were like looking at your times and, and caring about it. In the beginning, when you qualified first, you were like, holy fuck. Well, the first year I ever did Bigger Bang Slalom, I never fucking thought of it well i guess i did but like i didn't know like wax mattered or you know like oh God, all wax these things so, just like wax is so important man everybody right? really fucking wants to go fast it's oh, like a big yeah. deal yeah same with like baked salmon was sick too like i wish that, i hope that thing comes back to life i don't think it will because they won't do it anywhere but seymour so Seymour was like, well, you have to get like insurance for all the people that are working there on it. And it just kiboshed the event. I wish that it would too, yeah. but it's, it's a uh, logistically, it doesn't sound like it's coming back. I'm going to do something though. I'm going to yeah, do a tri mountain series where you ride something at Cyprus, something at grouse, something at Seymour. And it'll probably be one of those. At least it'll be like, have a racing element to it. The other will be like filming. You know, like just, it'll be a clip contest. Just come up and film yeah, with your yeah. buddy. Whoever gets the best clips, celebrity panel of judges. And, and you, if you get a good clip, you can fucking win, which is awesome for like everybody. Everybody, yeah, yeah. Right? Because you're not guaranteed good clips. Yeah. But if you're a fucking semi pro, then you got a better chance than most. Do something big, something good. Yeah, you guys, it's funny because you're, you're kind of a competitor at heart, but at the same time, also a very soulful, like, let's just go fucking snowboard. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely competing. Yeah, it was fun. I had fun doing it. Whether I won or not, didn't really matter. But uh, it was fun, like, hanging out with your homies and traveling around and i mean it would have been nice to win i guess <laughs> the homie factor the homie factor is like the is is the thing that now me looking back at snowboarding 
like the camaraderie of like having friends that you're doing this with like go, going home to empire shakedown because that's pretty much hometown yeah like, yeah that was sick like everybody's there you're those were huge blast. yeah never well I'll, usually you always made finals and that's all that really matters because you always will kind of want to ride at night and if you didn't <laughs> yeah i guess you were bummed i think it only happened once that you didn't make finals, I didn't make finals and i was like wow it's at the shakedown <laughs> Was that the end of the no. end? No, no yeah. of course it wasn't over. <laughs> but yeah, contests were fun. Hanging out with all your homies. How, but how many days a week were you riding otherwise? Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Sixty plus, at least eighty plus. Mm-hmm. Now it's tough. This year, I feel like uh, my goal was well, my goal was sixty. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't even know if I'm at 40. I must be close to 40. You must have a ton. I don't. I, you know what happened was I stopped counting because I found I was counting days that didn't really count. No, you, know you what have I mean? to count every day you strap in. I know, but it's they don't count if you go and take one lap and it fucking I would sucked. go from the park. If I went from the parking lot to the base. Yep. Which I never, like I would go up the hill, but like as soon I as I strapped in, fuck, yeah. it was amazing. Oh, yeah. Sure. Like, I would count this as a day. Like, this has made my day. Riding ice is one of the best fucking feelings because the <laughs> next day, when you have done even something small on, like, super hard pack, and it just softens that little bit, it's, like, such a gift. You're like, oh, I already have my confidence on this thing, and now I get extra confidence because it's fucking epic conditions versus... The crazy shit we were riding yesterday. I love shit. that. I love that. Was yesterday shit? No, but I just mean like riding riding in bad conditions makes the good conditions ten times better. If you only yeah. go, go yeah, when yeah. it's good conditions. Yeah, like this year has been uh, something else. Different. But like, not really. Like I can only really remember going up the gondola and coming down twice straight to my car. Because I was like, yeah. Only, only two days this year that days. happened. Yeah. Not bad. So that's good, actually. It's amazing. Early season everybody's was supposedly fucking tripping out there. Yeah. But the if I'm were... putting an edge in, I'm stoked. Yeah. Cashy yeah. makes the best boards around. Like, I don't even... Like, you so ride are, my board, you're stoked. What are his boards? Let's let's plug them, because I... High I, Tide. I, high Tide. Manufacturing. Built and in Pemberton by he, Cashy. He builds them, hand builds them himself. Hand. They're the best. He used to... He used to work with what DC worked with a bunch of brands. Cool, and he's super meticulous. Like the guy's insane. Mm -hmm. You want him to make your board, and that's what he does. <laughs> like it's the best materials, and and they ride really, really so well. amazing. My board is so good. I had a one that I've been riding for let's say two years, and he's uh, he's like, dude, I'll get you another board. I don't need one. Mine's fine. That's I am falling in my. Heel side turns, but I feel like it's just me being weak. Okay. And uh, so he makes me a new board. What the fuck was I doing? <laughs> like this board is insane. I've never been able to, been able to like pull into a heel side turn like that, especially with JS bindings. Just like onto your, give some forward lean, and you're just into the turn so hard and dig so hard, and the thing's holding the whole way yeah there's something else my board anyways yeah yeah i've never ridden a board like that I, I, re I remember having some days testing boards in the back in the 90s companies would go to whistler because like oh if our boards ride well in whistler like they'll ride great everywhere right and so as just as a shop rat guy you'd get to test stuff i remember <laughs> testing solomon's first run of boards and Rosie boards for some reason. Rosie boards are good. At Whistler, they rode so yeah. fucking like that edge hold you're talking about yeah. at those like did high they, speed did they have runs. The magnet traction or whatever. They no, it was pre mag. It was old. It was like the old like full foam core boards. Hmm. They used to ride like fucking magic. Hmm. And uh, but I remember also that the grooming at Whistler was really fucking good. Yeah, it's super whack to go to a. I mean, coastal mountains are really difficult to groom properly i guess it's that's not true because you go to mount hood sometimes mount hood grooming is just fucking flawless 
And Whistler's coastal mountain too. This year the grooming's off, but uh, it happens, right? I'm not uh, grooming as much. Best grooming I've ever ridden was Whistler, and it was Sun Peaks pretty good. Yeah. Oh, actually, Sun Peaks was really good too. Yeah. Nothing like a it, it, yeah. Powder Day's number one. Fresh, good, soft corduroy. God damn, it's good. That's why Whistler Black Home's the best. People want to shit talk. I don't know. I've said this before, but like, they've got the grooming. They've got the snowmaking. Maybe not this year though. This year made it feel like maybe it's more of a local ski hill kind of. <laughs> really, like, well, they didn't groom that run. They didn't groom that one. But still, there's nobody fucking here. Everybody thinks there's people here, but there's like, I'm riding on the chair. And there's no one around. It feels like I'm in the fucking middle of nowhere. All I've seen is is lineups that are insane. I know it's crazy. All I've seen are pictures of lineups yeah. that that don't make any sense whatsoever at all. Like it's like this cause opening day lineup. Sure. Go the opening day. It goes all the way through the village. That's fine. But like on a, I don't Tuesday, know why you go to those lines. Like, I don't know why if you're actually like thinking ahead of time, planning mm-hmm. ahead, like you don't, why are you even there at that hour? Right. You have to be there at six 30 in the morning, <laughs> like six <laughs> right. 15, like, or yeah. not six, maybe six 45. No sure. later than seven on a pow day on a fucking Saturday. Sure. If you show up at 10, you're an idiot. Like, you're just an go idiot. fucking stay in line. That's Even you nine. Get. Right, right. If you're shooting for if eight If you're 730, right, you're screwed. Right. You're at Portobello. Right, exactly. exactly. Like, if you don't know, then fucking that's what you get. But if you're there at 645, you're ahead of the game and you're riding the best snow. But how many people are there at 645? Like, you're looking you're at You're almost 50 through people? the corral. Corral. Yeah, yeah. But like a, a black home base... Seven o'clock, you're at the end yeah. of the corral, yeah. which is still only like a 10 minute. Wait. Do I have Once, to cut this out? Because, like, is this a secret thing that people want I just to test it. If you're not smart, then yeah. don't just fucking show up whenever you want. But, like, <laughs> I know I, when I get there, I get it in, and in two hours, I'm done. I can go home fucking same, super happy. Same. I'm the same here. You. That's why Grouse Seymour Cypress is so my home, is that I can get up. At, let me do the on the numbers. Yeah, 7.45 is the first tram on the weekends at Grouse. I can get up literally at 7. I could get up at 7, get dressed fast, drive over, and still make first tram. That's how fucking rad it is here. And then you're riding for three hours with nobody. Right. And when you come down, there's a line up out the fucking wazoo. Everything's gone anyways. Yeah. And then you can go over to Cyprus, and they've opened the top chair it's like if it's like if you time peak chair perfectly and you've already ridden like all the good shit and then you know when peaks can open and now you're in the front of the line for peak and you've had everything already yeah you just gotta get on the program man yeah and everybody's got the program not everybody people that give a shit do yeah yeah it's funny how like there's so many people that just don't give a shit and they don't get it like i've had some friends stay over and like we're battling Dude, I'm out of here in fucking 10 minutes. I don't know what you're doing. Oh, man. <laughs> I need coffee. Like, All right, see you later. Like, I'm gone. If not, it's going to ruin my day. Like, I'm going to park, and then I'm not going to be in the corral, and I'm going to freak out and just go home. It's a pow panic. I have it all the time, too. And it does disappear. Like, I remember, uh, well, the most recent pow day. It's like, you did one run. I remember doing one run. Yeah. Being at the end of the corral. Getting up, one run to mid station, getting no line, getting on, and like you're coming up, looking around, like holy fuck, it's done. It's only we've only done one run, one run and done. Yeah, I've seen that. But you still managed to boot blast one over there, and you're like, okay, that was actually unbelievable. And then you go to that chair, and it's amazing. And then you go to that chair, it's it's like amazing for at least two, three hours, like right. And then really, any hill gets fucking blasted. Baker, oh my god, I remember getting. Leaving for Baker at six in the morning, traffic out the wazoo somehow, fucking snow on the roads. I remember somebody spinning off the fucking road in front of us, and we're just going by them like, "Sorry, buddy, I guess that's what's happening for you today." Getting to the parking lot at nine thirty, right? Like, as you get into Glacier, and there's already traffic. You're like, "No, oh, man. oh no!" And getting into the parking lot at nine thirty and being fucking so bombed because. 
it's gone. I know, right? It's, it's go- such a shitty Everything feeling. is gone. There was uh, one day this year, it was 42 centimeters, Saturday morning. Big I think it was day. the first pow day of the year. Big really. day. And it, was, it wasn't too long ago. Like, it was probably January. Yep. And uh, drove in from Pemberton, which is interesting now. But I pull in. What's I actually get dropped what's off. What's different about Pemberton? Well, it's just now. I got to leave earlier, a half hour earlier. Because there's so much more people. Like so many minutes. more people there now. No, no, just like if I lived, because I used to live in Whistler. Oh, because so, you live in Whistler. Yeah. Okay, so I'm so leaving you, at 6, it's adding, 15. It's adding right. time. Yeah. I got and you. I get dropped off this time, and uh, it's 7. And the line is to Portobello at 7. And I'm like, oh, my God. It's stone 42. I fucking blew it. And I called Sansalone. Where are you? I'm, this is crazy, man. Like, I'm going to go home, I think. And he's like, I'm at the front of the line. Like, no, you're not. He's like, come in. So I sort of lurked around. I actually put my board in the lodge. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but I did. I put my board in the lodge and walked to the front of the line with no board so no one can actually, like, yell at you. Yeah. And I get in line with the cab and everybody. I'm like, holy fuck, dude. How am I going to get in here without... And these guys have been waiting since 5.30 in the morning. 5.30 for that 42 day. For the front. Yeah. For the front by the fucking entrance. Yeah, not at the, cor- not the corral. No, the we're right at the front. Right yeah. in front of the... We're, like, 10th. First gondola in. And uh, so I'm hanging out. I actually put my glasses on, hoping that people would recognize that, not me as a per, but like, I, you stand out with glasses, like, oh, you know? The guy with the glasses. Yeah. So the then front. I left, got my board, came back with my glasses on. As yeah. I'm coming back, and his crew are fucking snaking the line as well. People are losing it, and I'm coming in, and they're pissed. And the of guy's course like, they're pissed. I, 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 there's, I didn't know what to say. I had nothing to say. I was like, yo, man. Like, I remember like, trying to freak out. I was there. I've been in line. But uh, whatever. I managed to just You just, walk hold, in you just and, hold on. You hold on yeah, to it. Yeah, just like I did yeah. it. Yeah. Logan Short snaked that line as well. And someone tried to give him shit. And uh, he said, listen. Me coming in here is not going to ruin your day. I was coming up from Squamish to meet these friends. And if I can't meet them, I'm back there by myself. And that's going to suck. Yeah. Like, and the guy fucking opened the gate for him and let him in. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you can use that one. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I'm not going to say I haven't snaked the line. I've snaked the line in Whistler before, too, for sure. He's going to own it. I, I mean, I've got friends that used to not just snake the line. They would not pay for a ticket oh, they I've would just go around the, scan. Yeah. they go around the scan mm-hmm. and just walk in but not in the middle of the line like at the front yeah. of the line like uh, some boldness boldness can can work sometimes i've got a good one but i can't tell it yeah but it's good <laughs> it works <laughs> shit is anybody listen to this <laughs> yeah i've got i've got a couple this year that i've that I've shared with friends where I'm just like, yeah, I, 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 I can't tell them. It's the way it goes there. That's, that's the thing. If you don't know to get in line, like if you don't know how the, how the timing works, you're not going to get that good shit. You no, know? man. It makes no sense if they're fucking, who knows what they're up to. Like, well, Brett Tippy's a, a, a great example. I called him and was like, Hey, you want to go ride Cypress today? And he's like, do I like holy fuck? We're going up at eleven. Is there going to be any snow? I'm like, uh, yeah, because Skychair hasn't opened yet. He goes, I got up, I got on the road, and I think his timing was he was on the road at seven thirty, and by the time he got to Squamish, he was in the line for the village. At eight thirty, like the village line went all the way to Squamish, or just oh. outside of Squamish, and he went. He just turned around and came home. He's like, what the fuck was that? And I'm like, dude, it's, you can't, what were you thinking? You can't leave Vancouver at 730. It's, there's, a, there's been people in line up there for two hours already. You got to leave at 430. Yeah. You got to get there pre-7, before 7. Yeah, so anyways, yeah. Then, But we had a great day because there's shit to do down here anyways. It's just not the same caliber. It's I've I've always enjoyed the stuff that I ride in Vancouver. It's great, and I'll sometimes shit on on Whistler saying, "Well, 
look, it's only one run. You only get one run anyway. Yeah. And you've been there since <laughs> five in the fucking morning. <laughs> like, it's crazy. But that's not true. Because one run down million dollar trees is worth a thousand oh. runs here. Yeah. It's insane. That's probably this, maybe the first year I haven't done a million. You haven't done a million first tracks? Oh, yeah, I did. I did one. <laughs> I knew it. I did one, but like I didn't want to. How come? Well, I wanted to go somewhere else. Yeah. And yeah. then everybody was like, we're going to go here. But it was good. But yeah, I, definitely a minimal peak lapse this year for sure. Minimal peak lapse. Peak's not that great compared to like some of the other shit. That's it. It's it's good. It's it's good at first. It's not great at second. Like once that one fucking wall of people have come down, and that's not even that great either. You know what I mean? To be riding it like it's, it's such a fucking <laughs> the front wall, the front laps are interesting, but they you know yeah, they, it's all fucking good, I guess. It is. It is. It is. It is. Yeah, I can't shit on it. There's nothing better than a top to bottom on track run at Whistler. <laughs> fuck off. Like there's nothing better in the world to do. <laughs> me, you, me and Cashy did a West Cirque. This, me, Cashy, Schnicks. We did a first into West Cirque, first into Frogs on the whatever that was, 120 centimeters. Oh, wow. Back top, like, oh, wow. And we were first. We were 100% first. Minus Patrol, who told us like, you guys are going to love this. Yeah. Ah, it's amazing. And I was kind of shit talking pal for a couple weeks. <laughs> It's like, I don't need it, man. This is fucking the hit run is so good. But pow is good. It's nice. It's something more than nice, isn't it? It's something like it's the otherworldly shit. Yeah. The first tracks, yeah. those absolute Once firsties. Once you get speed out and you're hunting, I'm like, fuck, dude, I'd rather go high speed on a hit run than hunt. For yeah. Pow. Yeah. Dave Hatchett was talking about his favorite stuff. In California is bunnying and like kind of broken up pow that's already had some tracks through it that you still where where it's like like challenging. I'm like I want no challenge. I want I want the challenge to be like riding the terrain mm. smoothly. That's I, that's what I'm into. I I don't want the bunnying. I don't I don't want <laughs> moguls. I don't want other people even. I I just want the fucking the good shit. <laughs> yeah tell me about shit that you want to talk about i have no idea you got nothing that you're like that you were coming in here thinking oh i hope well, I, I was to like talk about that you know shit. honestly i i drove down listening to the to i was like what's up with jody's podcast let's listen to that again and see what we got into fuck man we touched a lot of shit in there you did and like the biggest one the response from jody's like that i got from people like people were freaking out for a second there and i think it was mainly because i well, when I listen to it again, you know, you kind of put out there the, I mean, I guess I touched on more of my, the points in my life where I felt like shit, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. maybe a lot of people are feeling like they won't, could talk about sort of shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like I definitely heard it. I don't remember most of it talking, but you know. I definitely went through a dark place moment in time and and it was cool to be able to let it out on there. And I met Etienne, you know, Gilbert. Of course. He called me not long after it came out and he's like, wasn't it? Because I think he's doing a lot of counseling. That's someone you should get on the podcast. I've had him. I oh, had, you had Gilbert? But only over the, only over the phone because he's oh, in Australia, yeah, right? Yeah. But he came back for something. When, it, when he was over here, I was like, I got to get him on the show while he's here. Yeah, now that I'm doing in, in, doing in person shit, yeah, yeah. he yeah he's he's a motivational like, guy, yeah, and yeah, 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 psychedelics guy, and all that shit. He was like, yeah. didn't it? How good did it feel to like tell your story? And I was yeah. like, yeah, I didn't really look at that that way going into it, you know. But I definitely got to tell my story somewhat at a point in my life where where you, you're like when you're down and out, you you want to tell your story. You want someone to just like hear your shit for some reason. Like I feel like shit for this, like mm. uh, for this reason or whatever, when you don't normally get that opportunity to just like tell yourself like, you're saying, Oh, I fucked up and I want to tell you how I fucked up or whatever it is, yeah. you know, like yeah, a breakup. Yeah. Like this is why I did it. Oh God. Yeah. And yeah. like you get to tell this story and like, coming out of that, even though I was like in a great place by the time I went in that podcast, but 
but like it was it was nice to talk talk about the darkness and shit and people responded like like it was nice to he- or it was good to hear someone fucking let go like or let it rip or whatever yeah. the fuck it was yeah it's like really coming in and like over the last over the last couple of man what a year it's been but like man it feels good to feel good you know yeah dude like and really see progress or just like how it happened and like how yeah really like how fucking you did a complete 180 and like and like how could i cha- help someone else do a 180 you know yeah dude my, my a good friend of mine biff who lives in my house or one uh, where i used to live in Whistler, he, he's in my house and we met he was going through a time and i was listening to the way he was speaking which makes me think of sean kearns and your podcast and i was like holy fuck dude you need to read this book because I can just hear whatever you're saying doesn't make it's not lining up mm. like the, the mm. words you're using and stuff like I didn't really say that but I'm like check this out now he's fucking completely obsessed with it he did a podcast and just told his story what like, book is it the four agreements oh so talk about Jody's right yeah it's so fucking good so Biff's there they invite Biff on to a podcast to tell his story and Biff's just a regular dude coming to Whistler working living the dream blah 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 right and he gets to tell his story and it's such a beautiful story. And he talks about his darkness and everything in the book. It just like it makes me feel amazing. Like everybody needs to f- be able to tell their story and touch on like the darkness that you've had or whatever. So like, you know, a lot of when I was coming to this, I was like, what are we going to talk about? Like <laughs> fucking snowboarding or like, we're going to get into it. Like what, what, what's getting into it now? Like, what do you want to talk about this? The book again? Like, right. Right. But, but like well, that, that, that whole chunk that you did talking about your dad passing away because we don't know how to do that. Like I remember a few years ago, I got this shortcut where I could say, I don't even know what to say. Like I haven't lost my dad, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. And that's better than saying, Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss in my own opinion. Like, I just feel like the response that gets from someone who's lost their parent, like, Hey, fuck, I don't know what to say. So I'm not going to say shit yeah. is it, it, like that. It's a, at least one step more real, Yeah. but it's like, you know, the Kearns way, the Kearns thing is like, fuck, he dives into it. Thank you for sharing. How does it make you feel like that kind of, yeah, dude, he's fucking he, good. Like he's a, that was a good, those two, I, did, I can't remember them fully, but yeah, the, both there was two parts right or whatever um or i've had him on the show a million, a million times time. i've had him probably five times but his yeah. latest one um and one thing that i want to mention here is that i've had a really good response from setting the intention to have the season actually benefit other people like yeah tune in let's talk about real shit the the trick because like so the one before with kerns was rooted in psychedelic therapy which is really a very, very powerful way to access this shit that's locked up inside of you that you don't ever talk about that really drives your motivation, drives like how you live your fucking life. It's in there. And then when you're high as fuck, sometimes you just are able, you're so high that you can talk to yourself and see yourself and then be like, what in the fucking hell are you doing, dude? Like, give yourself a break. Like you're so hard on your fucking self all the time. How about a little recognition over here for the cool shit that you've also done? Like you're doing good shit, but you never stop to be like, Hey, that was good. You're always like, Oh fuck. Could it be better? This is fucking good. You know, Oh, you're probably going to blow this stupid thing, dummy or whatever. And so the psychedelic thing took that voice out of my head with Kearns giving me 10 books to read and a whole, and really like diving in and, and saying, I'm, I, w- I want to do this. But then the non psychedelic shit that we did over the summer, it's a next level thing. And it's what you were just right. talking about. It's bringing who you are to a conversation and seeing that the person across the table is like, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah. 
That's a good, that's a good story. Your story is beautiful. You've had a long life. That history is fucking sick. And that they, so for me personally, I'm going to share right now. I trust Sean so much that right before we did the last one, I told him the deepest shit for me, deepest shame that I have in my whole life. Never told anyone. I've told a couple of very close people. And he was so fucking accepting and sweet and shared his own thing. And he was like, thank you for telling me that. I was like, I knew you would appreciate that kind of like real honesty. Like there's obviously I wouldn't make this up. Like it's real shit. You know what I mean? And I feel fucking horrible about it. And he goes, I feel horrible that that makes you feel bad. And it was so fucking nice. It was like, <sighs> And every day after that is different now. You know what I mean? So same thing. You talk about the darkness on Jody's thing, and then you get those constant reminders from people like, hey, I got some darkness too. Thank you for sharing. And yeah, people need to fucking speak the darkness. Like, yeah. you really need to get, you need to find an outlet somewhere, someone to talk to, and someone that's going to listen and not just kind of, you know, solve your shit. Try, oh, this is what you need to do. I mm. or like Sean, mm. I think you you you're supposed to. Say, I think you you should do this, not like you should. Right? Because I've heard that a bunch. You you need to. You need to. And you're just oh, like yeah. fuck off, man. Yeah. Don't tell yeah. me what to do, man. Yeah. yeah, that was a big one. I follow that one everywhere, like nonstop. Yeah, I catch myself all the time. Like you should no. He's Anyways. oh yeah, he's he's a master at it now. Like every step along the way, when he shares that stuff. Like, he, he told me one time over the phone, Currents told me one time over the phone, you know, when you say we and mm. everybody knows and this is how it is, you, you kind of sound dumb, dude. And I, I was love like, it. I was like, oh. Now I'm going to fucking have to go back and catch myself <laughs> on that shit. Can I piss again? Yeah, you can, of course. Okay. Coming out of whatever, reading this book and knowing and trying to follow all these rules and then actually looking back in time to those moments where you've really blown it and recognizing that you you didn't follow them. you didn't know those rules you may have known them but not really but like when if you can go back and find out when you weren't feeling that awesome like how those rules would have applied at that time, 20, 30 years ago, like this shit is fucking gold, man. It's like, gold. It's pure gold. If you do not live the, like, what am I, what am I trying to say here? But like, if you can find a way to follow those rules, like I don't think you're going to feel like a piece of shit ever again. That's true. I agree like with everybody. You. Everybody, yeah. if you can speak nothing but impeccability, mm -hmm. like there's no stopping you, you know, like really, I, I can't even, I don't know. I'm sure I blow it from time to time. I love to catch myself blowing it. Sometimes you'll f fucking blow a fuse. Something will trigger you and you'll go nuts. It's happened to me <laughs> many times recently when I, when I'm not impeccable with my word, but. Like, as long as you know it and you catch it and just like I, I turn around and just keep living that way, my, like, yeah, you're unstoppable. The assumption one for me is 100% of the triggers starting. Like, I'll just make an assumption about something, not be brave enough to ask. And then most of the time I'm taking something personally as well. But I'd like to go, I'd like to go off the economic system that we're using. That would be fun for me. I would like to to stop with the money and the worrying trades about all only. the stuff, trades and just... That's what I want to do. Being, like cool. when I thought I was going to retire for a second, like yeah. up last year or whatever, or whatever, I thought I was yeah. like cruising pretty good. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I'm only working for trades. That's it. Cool. I yeah. just want to trade. Yeah. I'll do that and I'll trade, but everybody else seems to be like too busy. 
to work this well it's system. a scary thing to to be on trade because what are you gonna get oh maybe you won't it's get like whatever you, you can like i can offer you painting what can you offer me mm-hmm. like i'm yeah. about to swap out for um framing of a shed in my yard and i'm gonna paint homeboy's house dope let's do it that's the way to do it yeah. no money changes hands there's no taxes I'll being take a paid massage. it's fine there you go exactly yeah i'll trade you some belize property and uh yeah. You come paint everything. Perfect. It'd be great. That'd be fucking sick. Everything everything down there is painted these cool colors. Like houses are all different, like bright colors and shit. It's a beautiful spot. Yeah. You gotta yeah. come check it out. All right, yeah. buddy. Let's fucking wrap it. This is insane. <laughs> this was a great conversation, by the way. <laughs> People are gonna love this shit. There's so much fucking depth in there. And real <laughs> actual real shit. Thank you for, couple, for bringing couple moments. Real things. Fuck, it time flew, eh? Wow. Yeah, this is we're at three hours now. Like, wow, that, nice one again. Yeah, that was fucking epic, dude. Nice one, Eric. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming down <laughs> and doing it, dude. F and rad shoutouts this week to Rube Goldberg and Rube's mom. Thanks for being on the show, you guys. Special thanks to all our sponsors and all our Patreon listeners. Tag New Greens in any F and Rad post for a free sample of an amazing organic green drink. My daily go-to. Had one before shredding Seymour today with 57. And tag 1910 for a chance to win a monthly hoodie giveaway. Be sure to come back next week for another episode of F and Rad Snowboarding presented by Skyview Campers and brought to you by F and Rad Productions. I got a bear fucking break in to my car and just completely destroy it. That really happened? Oh, yeah. Fuck, man. A bear gets it's complete right off. My car, my Audi wagon. Totally done. Just destroyed. What did the bear want in the car? Nothing. There was nothing in it. Went in my but truck first. I d- what? Went in my truck okay, first. Okay, I don't understand this. So my mom wakes up. Well, there's somebody in your truck. Yeah. Wake up, look at the window. There's my truck doors open. So a bear can open a truck door. Oh, yeah. So I go downstairs. I'm opening the door. I come out. I go to the truck. There's nothing in it, but I hear noise. What the fuck? I look in the back of my truck, nothing. I look at my Audi, the windows are all steamed up. No way. I go to the front, there's a bear sitting in my front seat just staring at me and just starts. Like, imagine a bear going completely fucking insane trying to get out of a car that's locked shut. That's, the doors are all closed. Why did he close the door? I don't know, man. I think his foot like dragged when he walked in. It just dragged the door shut. And we just were staring at each other and he just went fucking berserk. And all I could think about was how fucked I am. <laughs> so I went upstairs, got the keys, unlocked the door. It still wouldn't open. I had to pry the, the passenger rear door open. Pull the door open. Bear jumps out, fucking runs off. Compl- just shit shit in all the seats and everything was destroyed every seat was ripped so to shreds sorry. every fucking panel was gone and i had to go to sleep at 2 30 in the morning oh my god it was the worst and then whatever we've made a couple power moves and then i found a sweet new car of course you it did. worked out like perfect yeah it does it did we broke into 13 cars in pemberton out there Oh, are they going to kill it? I think they just relocation. So. Good. Yeah, they just scoop it up and they're like somewhere with no cars. Mm-hmm. I can't believe it shut itself in your car. Oh, yeah. And why did it go in the Audi? There was nothing in it. My truck was filled with like French fries and like ciggy butts <laughs> and just like gnarly <laughs> painters construction, you know, truck. Just, I, did, I just The Audi was clean. The, it's like, I like what this guy eats, man. Some fucking french fries, some chicken nuggets yeah. on the floor. Didn't get this is anything. epic. And then it gets into the Audi and it's, <laughs> it's stuck there for how long? Like an hour or something no, no, before uh, you go out? You know what? I don't know. Yeah. But, but, uh, but it just goes berserk when it sees you. My time was 10 minutes. It's yeah, like, just I'm... Like, f- just imagine a bear thrashing yeah. so hard. Like... <laughs> So fucking hard. It's like Tommy Boy when the when the yeah, deer yeah, wakes exactly. up. Yeah, exactly. It's just kicking every panel and just destroying everything. Exactly. And then it just runs out and is like, "Fuck you!" Yeah. Wow, that's a great story. 